off, then I can start speaking. I've got a few things I wanted to say. Uh, I'll be offensive as always. That's my default. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is the, the Sierra Circles of Professor Dr. Muhammad al Masri YouTube channel. Um, I've decided to go on camera for now because we have a very special session on Palestine. Obviously, every single one of us, unless we're born under a rock and have no souls, are aware of what's happening in Palestine. And it makes us bleed. It is worth saying certain things in, on this subject because... This isn't the first time Palestine has been an issue and our hearts have bled for it. And every morning we are fixated and every moment we, we feel every bomb that drops, though we're not there, we feel it. It is worth learning from history and learning from current experiences as well. I'm not sure, too sure how authentic this is, but when I used to study with one of the, one of the uh, knowledgeable people in one of the groups, he mentioned that when Al-Quds was attacked by the Crusaders, the Muslims ran inside to read Bukhari because they weren't aware of what to do. This echoes our sentiments now because we seem to make the same mistakes, which is an event happens and then we scramble and we don't learn until the next event and then emotions are high. It's almost like the, the Ramadan high where you... You go, you have Ramadan and you feel very spiritual, then you go back about your lives and then it happens again. I am talking about here that the real culprits to, to blame Israel, and which we do, is like blaming a great white shark when you've chummed the water. It is a, a predator. In this case, it's a nefarious, verminous predator. But you expect from a predator for it to go for its meal. The shark, however, is protected. That shark is protected by our leaders. It is very telling when, you're, when the person who was one of the terrorists who formed Israel, Golda Meir, mentioned about when one of, the, one of the attacks she did against the Arabs, she was sleepless. And then when she realized there was no repercussions, she knew there would never be any repercussions. And we fast forward decades later, and we are in that exact same situation now. We have scumbags. Before the various intifathas, more people died, more Muslims were killed by Jordanians on the Allenbury Bridge than the Israelis did. We, I'm going to give a description you may not like. I will say something you will not like. That is, Ariel Sharon is a great man. He is a great man for his people. He was presiding over genocides of Muslims, and he never let Israel down. We don't even have someone like that on our side. We have people who are Ariel Sharon's for them. Now, look, as I gave the analogy of the shark, these rulers are even worse. I don't expect anything from them. However, there is a creature, a bottom dwelling creature that picks up off the carcasses of these sharks. They are the maggots, the parasites. They are the government scholar. No matter how much we progress as an ummah, how much we are sincere to bleed for Allah and his messenger, these people and their industrial level lying and deceit are the ones who provide the material, the ammunition for these, government, these governments to carry on what they are doing, to back Israel, to normalize with this same vermin and this same vermin. They are the scum. We have, we are now at about 155 plus episodes of this dasir. There is a purpose behind all of this. The Quran, central to its theme, central to it is the idea of hakimir, Allah being the hakim. The material we give you reminds you that Allah is the hakim. Allah doesn't just leave us with some kind of abstract philosophy. This isn't Christianity we're talking about, where you believe in Jesus and everything's fine. Go about your business happy. Have a nice day. Accept any tyrant and be happy. No. This is the final message. There will be no message after this. This message has, is comprehensive. What we aim to do in this tafsir is to provide you with the material, the steroids, the injections to inoculate yourself from this ridiculous babble from these regime scholars. We have the arguments which will 
destroy them. We are the chemotherapy for these malignant tumors who call themselves government scholars. We call them government scholars. What they call themselves doesn't even matter. They have influencers who argue about normalization. You know who you are talking about more normalization as if that's a good thing. That's like going to a British GP called Harold Shipman and say, can you look after my mother, please? He's a mass murderer. How dare you go to these people and accept any other outcome from them? We give you the material. We are subservient to you. This whole purpose is to give Shura back in the hands of the people. Giving Shura in the hands of the people is to supercharge you with the stronger arguments. We say Hakimiya. We say you rule it by Allah and his messenger. We say these regimes are in are in a, are not legitimate. And we give you the material which will make you vomit from the depth and the strength of the arguments. There is, we are unequivocal about it. We are uncompromising about it. May Allah give us the strength of a six-year-old in Gaza who stands under the bombs and is immune to it. Those brave Muslims who are on Rabat every second of this day when we switch off our computers and we go to sleep and we switch off our phones on silent mode, they are under those bombs and they've been under those bombs and the oppression for 70 plus years. We owe it to them. May Allah give any one of us the strength of one of those six-year-olds, distribute that strength, dilute it amongst us, and we will be 10 times the people we are today. Because that is what feeling for this ummah is. We will give you this material. We will be segmenting it for you so that you can take it and you can go before these scumbag government scholars and say, we see you. We see you when you normalize. We see you when you back the tyrants, whether you're bombing in Yemen, whether you're backing the regime in Palestine, whether you stand down on the borders. We see you. You will never hide again. We are coming for you and we will rip your arguments apart. And if we can small play a small part in that endeavor, we will do so. You feed back to us. You tell us what you want to know. We will rip them apart for you. They will have many more orifices when we are done, inshallah ta'ala. Anyway, that is enough emotion for now. I will hand over to more mature uh, personality and more knowledge, inshallah. Oh, before I uh, go on, this is a weekly circle. We will probably be changing time to 1 p.m. We go through the entire Quran. We have 155 plus episodes. And in between that, we have loads of juicy content for you to provide you with everything you need, inshallah ta'ala. I will now hand over to the Sheikh, Professor Muhammad al-Masri. Thanks. Alhamdulillah. Just a reminder, I think next week is the change of the clock. So it will be one o'clock instead of two. This is, it will be the same time, but it's just a clock setting, the legal or formal clock setting. And uh, yes, um, uh, I would say, uh, let, let me, um, do I need an introduction about what's, what's, what's the issue in Palestine is all about? And I'll, what's, I'll, I'll go for it. Go for it. Okay, so just, just, just I'll, 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 maybe make question, maybe you do it interac interactively. I think. Uh, let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's start for this. I've, I've, got, a, I've yeah. got a rough idea. So, yeah. I mean, firstly, firstly, we're all familiar with what's happening, what's happening in Palestine. We're all, we're all aware in terms of um, it's a recurring occurrence where the Israeli, obviously, Hamas did certain acts against this, this despicable regime. And people are kind of on the fence about the issue. They kind of, um, there is almost a forced requirement for the media establishment for people, Muslims to denounce Palestine, uh, the Hamas. Yeah. As if they haven't, the Muslims in Palestine haven't been smashed in the face for decades and decades and decades. And if if you imagine, imagine you prod, uh, prod uh, even the smallest of preachers, they will one day lash out at you. And Palestine, yeah not meaning to give it a poor analogy but if it's, it's a very much smaller smaller entity however they have a more ferocious punch and they only had a small taste of what they were receiving for for decades so maybe um we can discuss the issue of the current events and also maybe some history as well because there's there's quite a lot of things in there there's there's history there's and, Umar pre, there's a Hudaybiyah. because can you believe it or not some madkhalis, one particular madkhali, I, I can probably save us the trouble of knowing his name, who seems, he looks like someone who's got 50 types of Down syndrome. He has effectively trying to 
to bring things like Hudaybiyah, Sulh, and just mix everything together in a retarded pie, because he's retarded, that's the best he can come up with, a pie to try and no, tell it, the pie it, it I don't think he's retarded. It's most like he's a traitor. He's a, he's a paid he's a paid shiller. No, he's an idiot. But... A prostitute you pay. This guy's stupid enough to do it for yeah. free. He's, yeah. he's genuinely retarded. Chomsky. Anyway, sorry, who said that? Um, yeah. So these kind of people, they argue for normalization and peace. And I think I think what's uh, what, what's important is even even some people who are you know relatively outspoken have also mentioned certain things about normalization. And on their own, ironically, on their own uh, chat. Somebody wrote something like a 13 page, 13 point rebuttal just on the issue of normalization. Yeah. Perhaps the first question I should ask you is, um, as far as what's your analysis on the situation so far? Obviously, we're all we're all bleeding Palestine right, right now at this moment in time. What are let, your let thoughts? Me just, on let me just put a, put a little bit of a historic base of what's going on. Uh, uh, so because many people have this came out of the vision of the people, and especially with Oslo and all of these things, the people uh, seems to be there's general urge by, by many even simple-minded Muslims, not really the savvy one and the one who are aware of what's going on, is that the, the entity called Israel, it seemed to be a state, it seemed to be acknowledged by the Palestinian in Oslo, and things like that. Uh, that to, to see what is the reality, what we are dealing with. What we are dealing with is that the Muslim world was obviously up and down through history until uh, in, in the 19th century, when... Uh, nationalist, uh, atheist, and, and uh, uh, anti-Muslim forces in Turkey, the so-called Young Turks and so on, came to power. And uh, twisted really was the called Khilaf, no, form of the nominally Khilafa Islam, yes, nominally. It was not really a Khilafa. And in this, I disagree strongly with Hizb Tahrir when he referred that the Khilafa was, was, uh, was, uh, was demolished in 1924. That's not true. It was gone long before that, most likely 1850, the last nominally, which can be called Khilafa, is gone, and maybe even before that. But it was the, in decline militarily and economically before that, due to many historic reasons, and which are intrinsically deep in Islamic history and misunderstanding of Islam and the, the formation of Islam and the cancellation of Shura and the usurpation of power by Muawiyah onward. But that's we're not going to go into that. So the weakness and the disease is inside the Ummah. That's definitely where it started. And the Khilafah Uthmani is essentially a military uh, authority, which did achieve quite a considerable amount of uh, victories against Europe in the Middle Ages and so on, but was because it lacks the clean foundation of a statecraft, it started declining. And Europe picked up and started after the Enlightenment, started reforming, developing technologically and scientifically and so on. Although it was never superior morally, it was it is the same brutal barbarian Germans but now in, in wolves in sheep's glory. But we're not going to discuss the European psyche, psyche and their background. But uh, definitely they were superior in gun, in powder, in, the, in, in, in sea craft after, after one or two centuries of, of, after the Renaissance. And they roam in the oceans and they squeeze the Muslim world from around. And the Khilafah started declining, which is by necessity. Uh, imagine if uh, when the Brentic Press was invented, we're well, not discussing even that the printing press actually was in, in the, the way Gutenberg did it. It's essentially that it was in Samarkand. Well, we're not discussing priority who invented first. Maybe Gutenberg invented it completely in a similar way what was in Samarkand, but it was there. That important event, which is really a, 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 a break in history, is as, as important as the frequency as the invention of paper. Which the Chinese did in the in, in the in the early common era. The the invasion of paper was adopted by Muslims, and the paper making is what, what was one essential uh, ingredient which pushed forward Islamic scholarship. And uh, now uh, the 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 possibility of uh, making knowledge available for the masses by the printing press was forsaken. Not only forsaken, the printing press was prohibited by the fatwa of the so-called scholars of the Khilafah Uthmaniyya, and we remained prohibited, sometimes under the penalty of death, for three centuries. So they declined the disease internally, but I'm just mentioning that just so that nobody think, uh, should, should think that to blame the other one. Blame yourself first and start thinking how to correct and reform yourself. That's number one. Anyway, that's the historic the, the decline continued until Napoleon occupied Egypt for a short time, and he brought up in the press there. <laughs> Brought by the friends, 
and then slowly things started changing but unfortunately the decline was so prog uh, has progressed so much and the split inside the ummah and the decline intellectually was so progressed it needed a long time to pick up it needed until our time until we have a little bit of clarity about the meaning of islamic govern governance and islamic uh, way of life etc in in a more social and clear way but during that time the uh, those who are influenced by the Western and, and, and the rising West and the nationalism and the atheism and secularism of the West took power in Turkey and uh, uh, led the movement of, of uh, 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 an attempt to see yeah, they called the Bullock of Tatrik, making or the whole. Apologies, we've lost there's an internet issue. One second. Apologies, I'm trying to call. Apologies for this, just some technical issues, we, we, we're working to resolve them.
One second, one second, Sheikh. Um, we can see you. Yeah. Just can't hear you yet. Sorry, can't hear you yet. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you now. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Sorry. Apologies for that. We, you are at the point. Uh, well, hopefully you did not disconnect streaming. Keep streaming ongoing, even if we get disconnected. I ask Okasha yeah. to be to be on the side no to problem. interfere if it happens. So we went through the desktop uh, icon. Maybe this is more efficient. Let's yes. see how it works. You always need to use desktop because the, the, the web browser we established last time is just... Uh, yeah, the browser is, is not working properly. It is not connecting to the app properly. No anyway, so back... After the, uh, 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 it was mentioning Saxby, who just quickly. No, no, before that, you, you cut out at the point where you're talking about the printing press. What, what, what where did I cut? Um, you're saying the printing press, Napoleon, I can't recall to be honest with you. Okay, that, okay. Okay, so Napoleon is the one who introduced the printing press to, uh, to Egypt when he occupied it for a short time, but he withdrew, etc. So <laughs> amazingly, the French are the one who introduced the printing press, not ourselves, which is a disgrace, really, historic disgrace. Anyway, uh, but the decline has progressed for three centuries, the prohibition of the printing press. That means we have three centuries lost of wide disseminated culture and education thing of the people because of these treasonous, idiotic scholars who gave such fatwas, uh, prohibiting the pr printing press and even moving the Khilafah uh, toward issues, uh, injunction like uh, even death penalty for people introducing our printing press. Anyway. Then the, uh, the, the people uh, in, in, the, in the mid 19th century, uh, Abdel Majid, I think the second, uh, were, were tried to reform the country, but he was obviously influenced by the West and they wanted to imitate the West and he sent uh, students to study in Europe and so on. And they came back uh, essentially uh, being uh, secularized and European and infected with the disease of called nationalism, called nationalism and defining nations. Uh, the, the wave of nationalism started in Europe at that time. The, the power of kings, that countries they identified them as belonging to a king, disappeared and instead identified them just as a country, as a nation. They invented this concept. While well, the kings are actually the ones who have all the power, but they are behind the scene. Uh, like, for example, I usually give the example when, when, uh, when uh, Nelson uh, encouraged his soldier before the Trafalgar battle saying, England expects everyone from you to do uh, to his duty. There's nothing called England. What's England? It's mountains, the people, the people in the villages in England do not know even that there is that there is an army or a, or a, or, a, or a navy fighting at Trafalgar. Uh, essentially, we say the king expects you to die for him. That's what he says, but saying it in a more modern language suitable for the 1805, the time of the Battle of Trafalgar. That's it. So England became a proxy for the king, but the king re receded in the back. And the same applied for Germany and for the few, the laws and so on. They were in back and say, it became Liechtenstein, not the Duke of Liechtenstein. It became Germany, not the King of, uh, of Russia, etc. Anyway, so nationalism and then connected to a certain race and nation or a collection of tribes who come, uh, maybe belong to an Indo-German origin and things like that. And then nationalism, patriotism was developed as an ideology for the state because the state has to have some kind of a binding cement. The binding cement was nationalism. The young Turks imported that to Turkey and tried to turn Turkey into a nation in the Western style. And for that, they adopted that uh, everyone must speak Turkish and try to enforce Turkish on the Arab world. Uh, as a counter action, on instigated and also encouraged by the British and by American missionaries and so on, an Arab movement and Arab nationalism movement ensued and democratization movement. So then Ummah was split and ready to fight against each other, what has happened in the First World War with the rebellion of the Sharif. And he was obviously, the British encouraged that to a great extent, promising him the world, promising him to be the Khalifa of the Arabs and that they will unify all the Arabs under his rule. All the Arabs, meaning essentially Egypt was already acquired by the British, it was excluded, but it include Arabia, all of Arabia, include uh, the Levant and include Iraq, up to the border of Turkey. That was the promise. And meanwhile, they have concluded secretly how to divide that area between them, including giving of Turkey or part of Turkey, Istanbul, etc., to the Russian. And that agreement was usually uh, called Sykes Pico, uh, to, uh, uh, named after the Secretary of the Foreign uh, and Foreign Commonwealth. That, that, well, there was no Commonwealth yet, uh, the Foreign Secretary of the British Empire and the, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of, of France. But the reality, it was an agreement between France, Britain, and Russia. 
when the revolution, uh, the, the Arab leader was so, so brainwashed and so dead or, or, or treasonous that when the uh, communist revolution succeeded, they exposed this agreement and publicized it to all over the world. But the British were able to persuade the Sharif and Arab leaders that this is all a communist fabrication. You don't believe these atheists. <laughs> they are lying. We are your friends. We will support you. We'll deliver on our promise. Obviously, we know that they didn't deliver. Then the, the so-called League of Nations was established to sort the issue of the, of the world war, especially in Europe, to establish a new peace, and a peace which end, ends all possibility of war, prevent wars in Europe specifically, etc. And that League of Nations make a decision that Palestine will be given in custody to the British Empire under the condition that they should manage the affairs of the Palestinian until the Palestinian mature and become able to manage themselves. So they were caretaker. And the British betrayed that in full. And they opened the floodgate for Jewish immigration, starting in the 20s and increased in the 30s in cooperation with Zionist organization who also cooperated with the Nazis, encouraging him to prosecute the Jews in Germany so they can. Now the Zionist, the Zionist movement is not a Jewish movement. It's a, a, a extremist Christian evangelical movement which has certain ideological and eschatological points of view I'm not going to discuss, it's well known. We don't really go to discuss it. And, and the majority of Jewish scholars in the 19th century, early 20th century, were adamant against the establishment of the state of Israel, and that we have now so-called extreme Orthodox Jews like Shas and so on, uh, 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 are Zionist and pro-Israel, is a recent phenomenon. But the real Orthodox Jews were never pro-Israel, never supporting Israel. Anyway, independent of that, the British betrayed their mandate. They opened the floodgate, and most, uh, most likely they are the one who encouraged the establishment of the Zionist gangs, Stern, Hagana, etc., and uh, handed the, the matter them over. And uh, in that in, in in that secret agreement, most likely it was okay for the, these uh, these to, to bomb King David Hotel, to bomb some uh, British soldier, so that the British had excuse we cannot. We cannot control the situation, we have to withdraw. And they withdrew after the World War, and then Israel was declared. So, in exclusion of about 10 to 12,000 Jews who were well established in Palestine and they have their own properties and they were there for centuries and they are citizens of the, of the area and they were citizens of the Khalaf of Uthmaniyya and others who immigrated from Russia because of Russian prosecution of the Jews and were admitted by the Khalaf in 1882. Also, a, a, a good group of, of, uh, of Jews from Russia who took refuge at the Khilaf of Uthmania. They became Khilaf a citizen and they established in Palestine. An exclusion of these 12,000 original ones and maybe 20,000, something like that, 30,000 who came from Russia, there was no Jews whatsoever. All the Jews we have now, with a few exceptions, the descendants of those are import, allowed illegitimately by the British Empire. So they established this entity. This entity is essentially a cancerous entity. It's a growth which does not bring to the area, is not intrinsically connected to the land. It is, I'm talking objectively now, not philosophically. They are, uh, they, they, ha they have an extreme Zionist and, uh, and apartheid ideology. It is, a, it's a cancerous entity. And in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a body which may have been sick or sicker than it should be or healthy or not healthy, but anyway, it is like a cancer in a body. A cancer in a body is not part of the body and has no right to, to exist. And the body has all the right to eliminate that cancer with all means, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy. So the first maxim, the first principle which must be established and stressed this entity called Israel does not have any right to exist by, by, by any definition, neither biological, nor, 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 nor philosophical, nor historical, nor religious. Even if they claim it is the promised land, that promise is an, an ancient promise which has been gone long ago. They have been vacated from the country by, by, by right or wrong by the Romans 2,000 years ago. They have no relation to that land. They, they came from outside, they are Russian, they are British, they are German, and they have impl been implanted there. So it's an, it's, a, it's an implanted cancer, exactly like medical doctors and researchers implant a cancer 
into uh, into the poor uh, testing animals. That's exactly the same thing. So this is fundamental point. This entity has no right to exist. That it is defending itself unviciously and so on, like any cancer. The cancer will do that also. We do all all the tricks of the, the DNA, epigenomic, uh, uh, bio, molecular biology, chemistry to defend itself. That's natural, obviously. Self 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 uh, self preservation drive, but does not give it any sense. Uh, make, make, uh, does not give it any sense of self defense, a right of self defense in, in in any philosophical meaning of right. That's biologically like that. Yes, we expect that. It's like a shark, which is looking for food. It looks for food and devours it, 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 its spray. No doubt about that. But does it have a right? Huh? In the case of a shark, it does because of the balance in the ocean and the natural balance. But this one is an implant. And the guilty of the implantation is the British Empire. And then the guilt has been taken over and cemented by the uh, uh, American colonial empire. So that's how the point has, must be stressed. That during the development, because of betrayals of most Arab regimes, and because they're letting down of the Palestinian, because the Palestinian co could not really find the way out of this, of the misery after they have been expelled, about seven hundred thousand have been expelled of their land, because of all these, they they were trying to find the way out, and because of their leader were either Bodega Ansavi or traitors, also the Palestinian. Like I, I'm doubting strongly that they are Arafat was sincere, but. I'm not going to discuss that. The man is dead. He is in, in front of his lord for accounting. They were forced or chose to go into certain compromises, which make them acknowledge that, uh, uh, that uh, the, uh, and accept the so-called two-state solution. But this does not negate the reality that this entity does not have right to exist. That some people who have been defeated, expelled out of their country, out of necessity, accept that as two-state solution does not give this any legitimacy. Because again, that land, yes, the people who have expelled that, like the people around Yasser Arafat who went to Oslo, yes, well, no, no doubt that they went and they accepted that out under the US, fine. But they don't represent all the Palestinians in the world and they don't because the Palestinian is not only belonging to the Palestinian people because it was never an, 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 by its own a standalone independent country. It was part of the Khilafah of Mania and part, part of the Levant of Sham. So the people of Sham must agree that was the, they, they are all related genealogically. They are all related in religion. They are related in language. So they, uh, the, the, the people who are in Oslo, they cannot act in behalf of the other people who have a share in Palestine and the rest of the Muslims who have a share in Palestine because of Al-Quds also. Al-Quds is the holy site of Islam. So all Muslims have a say there. And all Muslims clearly did not accept that. So even the acceptance under the U.S., by al Arafat does not give this entity any legitimacy. Besides, obviously, it's clear that the two-state solution has been accepted by Israel verbally as a masquerade. They knew any two-state solution will mean their demise in the long run. They will never implement it unless they are forced. And in such a, it's to such a level, which means Israel is collapsing anyway, unfinished. So that's just a little bit of history. Now, to your question. What was the question again? What is the current situation? Yes, yes. Basically, yeah. uh, bring us up to speed on what's happening. In yeah, uh, obviously, the developments, as we know, developed that uh, Yasser Arafat and his faction, because of either betrayal of Yasser Arafat or betrayal of the Arab countries in the siege of Beirut, in which the Palestinian and the people of Lebanon in Beirut uh, were actually victorious in the battlefield. That's one, that's one of two occasions where the, the Arabs and Muslims and the Palestinians were victorious against the un, so-called undefeatable Israeli army. The first one was in the Battle of Karama. That's the Battle of Karama. It was in 68. After the massive defeat of the Arab armies in 67, the Israelis most likely arranged with, with King Hussein, the traitor, crossed over because there was there was a, the camp, the, the refugee camp called the Karama. Al Karama is a, a, a village there called the Karama. The Karama means the, the honor or the dignity. It's actually not the battle was with the dignity for the Arab itself, which it was, but the place is called Karama. It's an ancient name. And the, and the camp of Karama there had, was harboring quite a number of Palestinians in, initially before even Fatah was announced under that name, it was famous. Ayas Arafat was there, Abu Jihad was there, this traitor, Abu, Abu, Abu Mazen, most likely was there, and uh, Ahmad Jibril, uh, who died recently, all of these were there, with a few thousand. Uh, possibly an arrangement with, with, with Hussein, they crossed over 
in at, uh, with the with the plan to eliminate those Palestinians and finish them because they were crossing over by night and fog and uh, doing a bit of harm to the to the Israelis, like shooting one Israeli, killing this one, doing this and so on. But for some miscommunication, or the command, local commander refused to obey the orders not to defend, so he defended, and uh, uh, one at least one one uh, 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 one regiment of the uh, of the of the artillery of the Jordanian uh, showered them with artillery with artillery attacks, and, and uh, a brigade of of the uh, of, uh, of the tanks participated in a tank battle. With the result that the Israelis lost about 50 tanks and lost about 250 at least killed. But the main losses were inside the camp when they fought against the Palestinian man against man and gun against gun. In that type of fight, aeroplanes are ineffective. And that's the only thing what the Israelis have, air superiority. So they, after a few hours of the battle, only 16 hours, they were screaming, asking at the time, it was the time of, uh, I think it was Johnson, scream asking the American help, and America put pressure or communicated with Jordan, and they worked a ceasefire, and they withdrew. And they withdrew. That was the first defeat. It was a relatively small battle. Not very much of engagement of a few thousand here and a few thousand here. And a few air sorties, about 50 air sorties, each one is seven, eight planes. At the time, it was all of them Mirage. The uh, Israelis were not in great in favor of the Americans. They did not have the Phantom set, did not have any of these more, more modern planes. They were mostly Mirage equipped and Hawker Hunter, British equipped. The other one, the confrontation in, in Beirut. There was also a prelude of interaction. There was no Hezbollah at the time. There was nobody there. There was only the Palestinian. And they were, they attacked, went through, they have some skirmishes in Sur, in Saida, etc., until they reached, uh, they reached Beirut. With the cooperation in East Beirut by, by Christian factions, especially al kataib the Phalangist, the essentially, essentially an organization modeled and built according to the image of Mussolini, exactly like the Phalangist model. Even they have the same dress, they called black shirts, the same black shirts. With the cooperation of those, they tried to get West Beirut, but they were not, did not succeed. They have 100,000 soldiers and hundreds, maybe a thousand more of main battle tanks, but they were defeated. The main mistake made by the Palestinians at the time that they accept the mediation of the Arab leaders, we suggested to them, you withdraw, we give you protection until you reach wherever you want, and they chose to go to Tunisia, and then there's a guarantee that the Palestinians will be safe, which was violated. The Palestinians were killed and maimed there in various camps and raped, etc. And uh, and but with, with this act, Yas Arafat became completely irrelevant because being far away in Tunisia, meaning you are finished, and that's what led them later after eight, eight years to Oslo. He became completely irrelevant. Did Yas Arafat did that as a part of the deal as a traitor, or he was persuaded and he was stupid? We don't know exactly. We leave that. He's in front of his law for this accounting. We're not going to do analysis on a dead man. So that's so the, the, we have these two experiences for the Israelis that in fighting man against man in the battlefield, even in ancient time, 68, 1968, and 1982, they cannot win. So then uh, the Intifada started in the late 80s, which was one, one, one of the reasons that, that fermented the going to Oslo. The Intifada was established, usually, mostly or almost exclusively led and uh, energized by Islamists, of mostly of the Islamic uh, Muslim Brotherhood direction, but also other like jihadi direction, like a jihad Islamic and so on. And we have the establishment of the Palestinian Authority. And originally, the, the authority was established, as, as we know, in, in the West Bank and in, in Gaza. And then there was a split, obviously, between how to, uh, to, uh, to proceed in the future and uh, how, how much pressure or confrontation should be done with Israel, which ended that the prime minister, who is from Gaza, from Hamas, split actually. So we have the Palestinian Authority splitting in two factions, the main, the main group and the, the traitor, which is evidently a traitor, uh, Abbas, who is not a Muslim, he's a Baha'i. He's, he's a descendant of Abbas Mirza, one of the founder of the Baha'i religion, which is obviously an, 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 a, 
a completely independent religion from Islam, has nothing to do with Islam, does not acknowledge Islam as a religion in the first place. It's the Baha'i religion. He's the, the great grandson of this Abbas Mirza, who immigrated from, from Iran in the 19th century and settled in Palestine, escaping uh, the sword in, in, in Iran. In Iran, he would have been finished and killed, so he ran away there. And uh, Hamas and so on in Gaza. And we know about the history, about the skirmishes back and forth, etc. And the siege of Gaza and the siege which is continuing for 16 years, making it essentially into an open air. During that time, and especially with the episode of the one year in which Morsi was 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 uh, Egyptian president, in that time, luckily, Morsi, being a good Muslim, may Allah have mercy on him, and being uh, having good connection to to uh, Erdogan and good connection to Iran and so on in the underground, considerable amount of weapons, rockets, and technology has been smuggled in Gaza and materials. The smuggling continue until now, but that was the bulk of information and bulk of education and bulk of training going there. And based on that, all the building up was made. In addition, whatever comes after that, bit by bit. So that's the situation before the 7th of October. It's clearly that the preparation for this action, this major action of the 7th of October this year, 2023, is ongoing and the training for ongoing for several years at least. Uh, using these, uh, these uh, gliders, which are used for sport. Yeah, you can use it for sport and you can train for just a few hours and you can use it. But if you want to use it in a battlefield, you have to have much more intensive and sophisticated training. That training cannot be done in Gaza. It's impossible. So it has must have been done in mountains of Lebanon and also in Iran. And, and all indication indicate that has been done there. But not only that, further and during the 10, 15 years past, considerable development in technology and in, 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 uh, uh, in uh, programming and hacking uh, techniques uh, even using artificial intelligence, uh, the, the Ghazawi, the people of Gaza, Hamas and otherwise, they are extremely sophisticated and capable. And uh, that's explained partly, but obviously with the highest of high spirit of, 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 of uh, fight and willing, willing for material because they are ultimately Muslims and they know the meaning of jihad and they have been groomed from childhood to be mujahid and ready for shahada. And that is their main strength. It's not, it's not, many people think about the rockets, how many rockets they have. They ask, do they have 70,000 or 150? We know Hezbollah is about at least 200,000 uh, missiles and rockets. That's, that's the good estimate. Gaza may have similar number or slightly less. That's not a strength. The real strength is the belief and the strength of, we have seen that in Taliban. Ah, also we should mention the victory of Taliban two years ago. That has kicked American ass in such a way that America became a low step. And everyone knows that I can defeat America. All what I need is to be devoted and perseverance, persever persevering enough to endure and survive the bombing and the humiliation and the attacks. That's what Taliban did over 20 years. And then ultimately they ended giving America the, the, the biggest, a bigger defeat than Saigon. Kabul uh, uh, 2000, uh, 21 is bigger than Saigon in uh, uh, 1974, much bigger. It's a real catastrophe. Was it 74 or 75? Anyway, around that time, it's much bigger. It's a much bigger humiliation. And the victory is much bigger. And the repercussion in uh, in matter of American standing in the world and its hegemony is much more severe than Saigon, much more severe. There's no comparison. So all of these fermented and encouraged Hamas with uh, cooperation with Hezbollah almost certainly and Iran to stage this operation. The operation needed a, a high level of secrecy, sophistication and, and exactness and uh, just high, some highlights which we may conclude from various sources of information and from some insider information. First of all, they were able to hack in the systems of observance because we have the wall surrounding Gaza and never ending amount of huge amount of cameras and surveillances and the radar which sends people movements and so on. Even some, a woman, uh, an Israeli woman said, we could even see a roach rolling around. Obviously it's an exaggeration, but you could see anyone walking and any bird flying, we can, we can visualize. 
None of that was seen. How can you achieve that? By hacking in the system and just freeze the pixel or repeat an old video in which nobody is moving. So they did that. Secondly, they have scanned, they have sufficient intelligence, local intelligence, and when we cooperative in the, in the, the Israelis or Palestinians living there who's doing some manual work, they know exactly where are the headquarters, where are the computers, where are the facilities, and, 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 and they know where are the various uh, shelters in which people escape. So after breaking through the wall or during breaking the wall, they shot about 3,000 missiles towards the various military bases and, and settlements around Gaza openly to initiate an alarm by the Iron Dome. Why initiate an alarm? Because the alarm in the case of missile attacks is known, it has a certain sound, and the people know that the course of action is to go in the shelters. So they went in the shelters, waiting for the, uh, 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 the alarm sounding that the, the attack is over to come out. During that time, the, the wall was breached, the Mujahideen went through, and they were waiting at the uh, uh, gates of the shelters for everyone to come out. <laughs> Give him a ticket, you are welcome to the prison in Gaza. And immediately, cars and, and bikes and motorbikes were ready to take them in Gaza into the dungeons under the ground. Most of them, some of them above ground to deter any uh, uh, air attacks, but uh, obviously Israelis were not deterred and they killed their own people to a good number, but very valuable, high-ranking people, like generals and so on, they are deep down there. And most likely they have been interrogated and debriefed in while. But uh, no need for that to any great extent, because most equipment and computers and, and files and so on has been also taken to the dungeons of Gaza. So this is the operation. And it was so shocking, so deep penetrating, and they used even these, these gliders and so on, unique methods, just for symbolic. I don't think the gliders are really battle decisive, but the fact that you can fly and you can shoot and work with these, to surprise the other side is causing a psychological shock. Based on that, Netanyahu insisted on an immediate ground operation, but the military resisted, because they knew if we go without preparation, we will be slaughtered. And since then, until now, it's back and forth between the leadership. Netanyahu insists on a government because he wants to save himself. Because in, in uh, a few days after the, uh, the, the first action, the 7th, like 9th and 10th of October, almost every personality on uh, leadership in Israel admitted uh, mistakes and errors and negligence. The Minister of Defense, uh, military commander, Shane Beat, Mossad, Everyone admitted. The only one who did not admit that he made mistake and his negligence is Netanyahu. He insists that he was right, and the others they are the one who are guilty one. Because he knows if he's removed, he admit mistakes, he has to resign, and then he will be marching next day to prison. So he's sticking to power to save himself first, and possibly to save a strike. But he is now concerned about his own existence. And it's going back and forth until now there's a threat and so on. The only thing that Israeli could do is do mass bombing to them. That's where they have superiority with the error. But that mass bombing, how painful it may be, how catastrophic it may be, it cannot decide the battle. Because battle of Gaza can be decided only by soldiers, Israeli soldiers and fighters marching in with personal weapons, facing Palestinian face to face, with knives, with swords, with machine guns, possibly RBGs. That's all what is there. And in that kind of battle, they have all these two experiences. And all indication is that in such a battle, they will be annihilated. And that's the reason they keep announcing from time to time, we are going in next, next night. Then it's postponed, allegedly because weather. We are going tomorrow, allegedly because no decision from the leader. Now the military claim we are ready, and the political dis leadership says, we, we cannot give a green light because America did not allow it. And uh, there's some negotiations are going. And then they start a negotiation about one or two uh, prisoners of war. And then they say, we cannot do anything until the negotiation is over. So it's clearly they are extremely concerned about. It. Does not mean that they will not do it. And also is something which many people have overlooked and, and for, for, forsaken, especially those who are having a sectarian mindset who claim that Hezbollah is, is, is in betrayal and so on, which I'm not saying it's impossible, it may be possible, 
but they have ignored that in the first day or the second day, essentially Hezbollah said, if Gaza is stormed, if the Israeli army entered Gaza, we will come full scale into the battlefield. And this is, seems to be essentially the agreement. There are even some analysts and some people who claim to be insider that uh, the initial in the initial discussion, it was discussed that to start the moment the operation uh, succeeds in 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 uh, in uh, destroying the wall and penetrating it and 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 taking as as many as possible, including generals and so on, prisoners of war from the Israeli, the Hezbollah will step in and participate almost immediately. But it seems to be Hamas itself and the jihad and the Palestinian leadership, the, at least the battle leadership, said no, that will be a mistake. You you hold back until they storm Gaza, then you come in. Not to give them an excuse that this is that Lebanon is in, in, in involved in the war. It should appear at the first a pure Palestinian affair, at least until they make an incursion. So that explains uh, somehow that, uh, that from the side of Hezbollah that we have only essentially skirmishes. One day one tank, another day one tank, two, uh, two uh, anti-tank uh, guided missile ATGMs, another day two or three, uh, that day five, that day two, and so on. And that's skirmishes. That's not a real battle. And we should also, these skirmishes, although they are creatively insignificant, are sufficient really to bind almost two or three uh, Israeli divisions. So about, about uh, 30, 40,000 soldiers of Israel are bound in the north because of that. And obviously, similar number is bound toward the Golan Heights, uh, fearful of not necessarily the, the Syrian regime. I don't think the Syrian regime is serious. I think they are traitors. And I think that this, this war will expose them. But because there are, uh, there are forces of Hezbollah and the Revolutionary Guard, which may come from the Golan, and those, there are some... some uh, uh, some groups which are uh, in, in, in fight with, with, the, with the Syrian regime may participate in attack against Israel. So the, 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 the front in the, in, in the side of the Jolan has, has to be also to, uh, to be protected. So there may be two, two or three divisions also located there. Uh, also, we, we should not neglect that there are two divisions, two full divisions, about 24,000 uh, just uh, tank divisions of the Syrian army. And there's no guarantee that they, even if they are now loyal to Damascus, to the regime, that them in, in a due course they rebel and start moving. Like exactly in the battle of the Karama, by the way, it seems to be all indication that Hussein had an agreement with the Israelis that they come in and finish the Palestinian. But the local commander did not obey the orders and they fought against the Israelis. So that can happen very well also with the units in, in the Golan, the, the, the Syrian army units. And uh, uh, that's very well possible. So you have to take care of that. So a good portion of the Israel army is being bound in the north because of these threats. However, if if really the Israelis make the major, I would say it's a major mistake, and they step inside inside Gaza, then the deal will be off, and then it, 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 the, all the reasons are there, and all the justification of the moral and political and balance of power justification are on the field on the table so that uh, uh, Hezbollah can can uh, come in serious. And the coming of Hezbollah in, in, in attacking full scale to Israel is, is, is not to be underestimated. There are the, the, the best estimates is that they have at least 200,000 missiles. Uh, I, mean, I mean missiles and, and drones. I'm not uh, discussing ATGM. It seems to be ATGM is like, like almost like a daily bread. It seems to be every soldier has a few uh, ATGMs with him. That's, the number is uncountable. They are in the flood of that. So they are flooded with that. They're using it even against, against bikes, against uh, jeeps, and so on. There are so plenty of that that this is not under the count. The count well, is the the main missiles and main drones. So that's the, 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 the current battle situation. The American announcement of the two carriers coming area is just master flexing and an attempt to psychological intimidation, which backfired against them. Or this moved certain forces in Iraq to move now against the American bases, which putting them in the spot. And until now, no clear statement came from their side was what they are going to do with the attacks against them in the Iraqi and Syrian uh, soil until this moment. So they are really, the Americans are in a catch-22 situations. And all, all taking all evidences and all capabilities, 
it's rather impossible for them to step any by any uh, significant means of power uh, to participate in the battle. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can exclude that they will participate with soldiers in the battle. That seems to be impossible. It's out of question. So, so that's American the situation in, in the field, in the field. So the Americans will effectively provide, most they will provide is air cover or some kind of... It, 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 it's uh, what, what's, what air cover is needed. The Israelis is having a superior air force anyway, it's number one. Secondly, uh, if, if the Americans fly with their planes over Lebanon or over Palestinian territory or any other territory, this will be almost like a war declaration. So the, the planes are essentially there. Nobody knows as well. I hear the piece of news, the interesting piece of news is that normally in, on, on, on the aircraft carrier, you have their basic meals, good meals. Usually the soldiers are well fed and so on. But yesterday they have a dinner which contains lobster and steak. And someone was worried, usually they have lobster and steak meal, either in, in great festivities that should have been in to the world the end of the month in Halloween, but we are not Halloween yet, or before a battle. So someone say, That's, that sounds awful, what's going on? <laughs> maybe it's nothing, just a soldier, maybe, maybe, there is a, maybe there's a whisper campaign on, 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 the, on the ships, on the aircraft carrier and the, and the battle groups, the people are, uh, the soldiers are upset. What are doing here? What, what are supposed to do? Because we know that uh, that even in America, in, in the high ranks of the ministry of the Secretary of State, there is a rebellion and designation wave. So maybe something like that. So you want to appease them with lobster and stay. It doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean necessarily there is some action to be expected soon, maybe. Uh, so it's strange. But uh, the presence is, I would say, I wouldn't say the president is completely useless for Israel. It's maybe symbolically and lift maybe a little bit the spirit of the Israeli, but I think that they didn't do anything significantly and now in military terms is actually more negative. If they had been far away, it would have been better for them and better for the Israelis as a matter of fact in, in the final uh, calculation. If you calculate everything pluses and minuses, I think it's a, a end being a minus being close to that, that situation. And uh, uh, concerning the Lebanese, the Lebanese have experience with the Americans. They have the uh, they have, they have hosted the Marines in 1981-82 and killed quite a number of them. <laughs> so, so that's uh, the, and they're battle hardened. They wouldn't care about the, these these uh, uh, these ships and what they do. And but, uh, uh, the decisive change in the battlefield, they can't adding anything really to the Israeli force. They can't. Well, the only thing the Americans are doing is really is pledging more money and sending ammunition. Sending ammunition is ongoing. In peace and in war, all the time. It's going for 70 years now. Or at least more, more accurately, about 50 years. Before that, it was the British and the French supplying. It's, it's continuation of the same, just increasing a bit. Also, that increase now is dictated by necessity because they asked the Israelis last year, this year, I think, was it last year, this year, early this year, to send from their stockpile of, of bombs and, and, and shells and so on, uh, about 80% was sent to the Ukraine. They never anticipated anything like that. So they are, are duty bound to replace that to the Israelis. And replacing it to, to the Israelis will be really from the hardcore of the American stockpile. So that even the American stockpile now itself is being depleted. So the situation is for the, for the enemy is quite awful, and it looks very ominous for them. Even even if it came to the level that when when uh, Ansarullah in Yemen sent uh, a bunch of drones, I think it's thirty or something, toward Ilat, uh, there is a there is a I think a destroyer in uh, uh, near near uh, in, in the north of the Red Sea intercepted most of them because they send them not uh, not like a not like a saturation attack. They send them in a duration of nine hours. The duration of nine hours does not saturate the defense of a, of a of a destroyer. Uh, you know what the concept of saturation. For example, you have a target like a ship. It has defenses. It can defend against one missile, two, five, ten, maybe 15. But if you attack in one go within a few seconds with the 30, 40, the, the system of defense is fully engaged and some of the missiles can penetrate and destroy the, uh, the, the ship, for example. That's called a saturation attack. The, the the missiles, these about 30, were sent over nine hours. So it's definitely not a saturation attack, and it was intended for Ilat 
almost certainly. Now the destroyer intercepted it, but they did not dare saying we intercepted it to protect Israel because otherwise they would be then engaged in the battle. So I said, uh, we, we, we felt ad- threatened and ad- ad- the attack was against our ship. So we were defending ourselves, which everyone knows is not true. So they're not even, even uh, is not even uh, able to express uh, uh, what, what they really intend clearly because they're afraid of the political and the other uh, military ramification of the same thing. So this situation of the American force in the area is precarious. Well, number one, the situation of the Israeli forces is extremely negative. There is a rebellion in the forces. Soldiers meet Netanyahu and swear at him and insult him. Where's that uh, being carried? Where was that being um, reported? I, I I I I don't hear you. Can you speak louder? Well, was that reported anywhere? This, this, this yeah thing? yeah this reported in various media yeah. And for example, when Netanyahu was visiting uh, uh, some soldier in the south, and then someone stood and started screaming at him, and then the, the, the broadcast was interrupted. Clearly, it was interrupted because if they would continue, it would expose what they have been saying to him. They did not uh, stand uh, clapping their hands and welcoming him. They were starting to scream at him. So we don't know what was, was, was happening, swearing and spitting at him. I think that you, you can't exclude that. Is that because they don't they want to go in, or is this a no, 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 no? Because because they they are upset about the politics and the failure of the politics, and and they, they think they have been betrayed, and they are putting well, putting put in harm's way. I don't think any one of the soldiers is interested to, to go in because everyone knows what it means going in. They're running out of adult diapers, and they have been the whole Israeli army and the Israeli soldiers. Besides being uh, that's what usually people say that Israeli soldiers generally are. are well, the Quran says clearly they love life and they don't want to die. They have no concept of martyrdom. If you don't have concept of martyrdom, why should you go for death? For something which looks very futile and not productive. And they have been trained to be facing army against army and having considerable air support and artillery support. That's all that they have. You see that for example in, in, in the, this, this pricking action, prick, prick, prick by Hezbollah. The, the firing from Hezbollah is mostly uh, uh, ATGM. Anti-tank guided missile ATGMs. That must be fired by some person who is sneaking between trees and from hill down to valley and so on. The answer of the Israeli is using the artillery from far away. No Israeli soldier is daring to step in in uh, over the Israel, uh, over the, the border. They stepped in one occasion a few days ago and they got burned down. The tanks were attacked and some of them were killed. So they learn the lesson. They are not just using the artillery from far away. Chef, they are not trained for that, and they don't have the courage for that. Chief, I've got a question, though. Look, you've got a finite area. Palestine, Gaza isn't huge. I mean, what's stopping them from completely carpet bombing it to oblivion? Uh, the stopping is that the, the general international uh, atmosphere is, is, is boiling against them, number one. Secondly, that bombing, especially, you may have followed the, the bombing of the of the... Uh, Baptist uh, Hospital. That had such a backlash, including the backlash in Iraq, including the increase of the activity of Hezbollah, including the now in the West Bank, we have a, we have slowly uh, uh, the Fatah organization, which is still somehow uh, obedient and connected with Abbas, starting to show cracks, and some of, uh, well, at least one faction, one small faction, have split, and the others are threatening to split. So that's nothing prevents them except that it is, the repercussion will be devastating. And this hospital bombing is is it typical Israel that they actually did the bombing and now they're looking scrambling for any excuse to blame Hamas? Definitely, I mean, by definitely, and this is by the witness of the of the Archbishop of of the, this belong to the I think the I think it's the the uh, maybe the Eastern Orthodox Church or it's the Ro- the Roman Orthodox Church. Anyway, it's an Orthodox Church. It belongs to that. The, the, the hospital staff and the archbishop said, we received messages from the Israeli saying, vacate the hospital, we are going to bomb. So this is now exposed. And this, this fake video they produce is, is a mockery. Even the BBC made a mockery out of it, which is obviously completely pro-Israeli. Well, nobody can claim that the, the BBC is pro-Palestinian or, or pro-truth. But it, it is it's such, such a, a stupid fabrication, so low level. Uh, say, uh, I hear someone commenting say, the shocking thing with, about this video is the low quality of the video. I thought the Israelis can do a better fake video than that. 
So that's that that narrative has been has but but it was crumbled immediately trying to diffuse the initial shock because the shock is considerable. So this public opinion is having a massive impact then. Yeah, public definitely. opinion has a massive impact. It's, it's, a, it's a major mistake to think that much public opinion does not have as it shows also the wisdom of the decision that at least at the beginning, uh, uh, Hezbollah does not come in full force in only if Gaza is stormed or if in a very long time of bombing is happening then there will be a reasonable justification for everyone. Because in the rest of the world, the people do not have a concept that Lebanon and Palestine and Jordan and Syria is only one country. If it was only one wilaya and the Khilaf of Osmania. Nobody has that concept. Muslims have that, but the others do not have. But if they, if, if such severe bombing continues for a long time, how long? That's a question to be always to analyze. But or the Israelis stormed with the tens of thousands, maybe 100,000 soldiers into, then, Everyone will understand that Hezbollah have to support, that the people from the West Bank have to support. Even the Egyptian army, there will be faction, the Egyptian army, they may call for, for they may, may uh, cause a coup d'etat. As a matter of fact, some Egyptian uh, entities, like for example, some judges, one judge addressed uh, publicly to the Assisi uh, an open letter asking him to, to participate in the battle and call for jihad. Maybe this simple minded to address it this way, but it is obviously an enormous pressure on CC. So if it can, if, if that continues and becomes more than that, or a deep deep incursion with with devastating result of the incursion, even if it will be defeated ultimately, and there will be remember that the siege of Beirut went for was it forty two or seventy two days, a very long time, and ended with failure. And the failure of, of the of Ayas Afad and Co is because they accepted the Arab solution either because of betrayal or because of stupidity, and accepted to be the, uh, to be transported to Tunisia. That was that was caused really to be a diplomatic and and ultimate defeat. But uh, they were not defeated militarily, and the ISIS did not succeed. They went ten meters and stepped back ten meters or twenty meters, and they lost considerable number of of losses and lost a considerable number of tanks. So the public, the international public opinion is of utmost importance, and also the amount and the, the masses of Muslim, Muslims, especially Muslim, but also non-Muslims also participating in the demonstration, and also uh, Orthodox Jews of the Naturai Carta persuasion, like in New York and in Washington, has enormous effect. The demonstration here in London, uh, the yesterday demonstration, is allegedly one of the biggest since the uh, Iraqi war demonstration, one of the biggest in the history of Britain. Usual demonstration in Britain, uh, like 40,000, 80,000, except, except in the case before the Iraqi war, so the invasion of Iraq, it, it reached millions. And now this one is uh, something people say between 100 to 200,000. And most likely it's more than that because they tend usually to uh, scale the numbers down. BBC I've got, some questions. I've got some questions now. So, for example, look, okay, they're not going to necessarily go to the ground on this. Now, Obviously, many people are going to be calling for different things. And also, for example, some people will articulate a kind of thing that co-opting the rulers, expecting anything from the rulers. So before this event, you had people trying to call for a normalization with Israel. Yeah. With the, no, this is off. the normalization is off. That's number well, one. Before before this event happened, what's your thoughts on normalization? Because there is there are certain prominent people who are saying normalization, if you accept it. Israel is they're not populous enough, they're not they're going to be effectively diluted by yeah, the like, like Shah Shah Bolson. I know yes. his point of view. That's 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 because these people uh, they are they did not understand really the root of the issue historically. They understand this is this is one final phase of the current uh, crusades. The may this current crusade may be not the last crusade. We have many crusades since uh, 1099, the first crusade. We have many crusades after that, including the one which led to the occupation of Algier for 140 years. Crusades are all continuing. They stop maybe for a few decades and then start again. So they don't understand the depth of the issue. Now, normalization, the, the argument that like Shahid Bolson, he bought on, assuming that he's sincere, most likely he is, he bought for the claim of the rulers that the best way is that we do normalization and then the, the demography of the demography of the Muslims and the Palestinian will overcome and the Jews will slowly disintegrate as well. That's the way they argue and try to sell their treasonous position. They do the normalization because 
they want they don't want anything shaking their their thrones and their thrones have been provided by the imperial powers most of the regimes in the area are instituted and structured by the imperial powers after the first world war and a little bit after the second world war and even after second world war, some so-called revolutionary regimes were actually coup d'etat instigated by america to unseat the british and the french and inherit their their kingdom so they these guys they have they they have a choice either give up the throne meaning give up their life because they have no other life they have no hope for akhir they have nothing else or obey the command of the those overseas and have less headache and focus on appease the population uh, provide jobs dance uh, dance and music and so on like muhammad bin salman so that at least you can save yourself from from public critic and uh, the people demanding political reforms and economic reforms give them something so have yeah. they ever had any independence so for example look there is for example you have uh, king faisal there's a, there's this 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 perception that you know he stopped the oil at a certain point that, that's that's so, just a rumor that's how all exposed that's all lie nothing nothing so, has been with, for example there's, there's a there's a king faisal had a six day uh, embargo oil embargo i thought wasn't that Understood not not even six days. Now that's just just a claim. They claim that. If you see that, uh, check check the records of the companies at the time and so on. There is no, no none of uh, like that. None of that of any of any significance. It's just an announcement just to get out of uh, out of the pressure of the public. But the public was putting pressure at that time on on the governments. At least if you cannot fight, like because the Egyptians were fighting uh, in 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 the Sinai. And even the Egyptian fight, the poor Egyptian army was fighting, thinking that Sadat is sincere. He wants actually, it was not a fight to liberate Palestine, not even to liberate Sinai. It's just to open the dialogue and have a have a negotiation. That's all. That's the horizon of Sadat, at best. And to to show the people that he is worthy of being president of Egypt after Abdel Nasser, the charismatic Abdel Nasser. Then after the charismatic Abdel Nasser, Sadat comes as a compromise candidate between the various wings, but clearly the weakest one of the revolutionary council. Of Egypt at the time is Sadat. He has, he has no credential whatsoever in the revolution. He like he's not Baghdadi, he's not Muhyiddin. Baghdadi and so on are known to be uh, inclined to the Soviet Union. Muhyiddin and so on known to be very close to America. And and Sadat is nothing. Sadat in the day in the day of the coup d'etat, he went to the to the movies. So just as a precautionary measure, in the case the coup d'etat fails, he can say, I was in the movies. I have nothing to do with the coup d'etat. He's a coward. So the whole 73 war is just manufactured, just he can have some settlement and establish and keep the presidency for life. That's it. That's it. So, so in you originally so the general perception of these rulers are that they are serving their own interests. And yeah. you know, and that's, that, that's, that's a correct perception. Only the most simple minded people believe that the Israel are, are serving the Ummah. Uh, the simple mind there are two factions, very uneducated people in the margins and villages and so on far away, and a few, and others relatively educated, but people listening to these Madhali and Jami and so on, uh, pigs, dirty pigs from Madhali and Jami persuasion, government scholars. I mean, the, 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 all the kind of arguments a, is, is, they, better, is, is better to listen to the ruler. He is interested, his own interest is to protect the country, he's under duress. The, the 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 foreign armies and the foreign uh, with the foreign uh, navies are just about to block uh, block the ports so he has to de de defend the country he has no other choice except to do that that's the usual what they are selling to the general public we are under the risk we cannot do any more that we have first to develop our own industry and do 20 30 program and things like that and then be down the road maybe 10 to 30 40 years will be capable of fighting and that's the reason when when the Palestinians with these uh, almost non-existing resources under such a siege in an open air prison for almost 14 or 16 years achieved that they are all now scrambling to take the side of the Palestinian and that for look at the Emirates for example who is the, the most advanced in in mutilating Islam and selling out what what is what is the uh, first advisor of Hama MBZ is saying He's calling the Israeli the brutal beast. Is attacking the hospital. The brutal beast is doing like that. They have to. They have recognized that that, that, they, that their argument and so on has failed. So they have to cover up now. 
So, so, so basically, they're basically pulling an Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. They are the Munafiq. Exactly, exactly. It's, <laughs> they're Munafiq Kafir. That's it. If you put that, then you, 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 then your analysis is correct. If you analyze them as being Muslims or being related to the Ummah or concerned about the Ummah, then you are mistaken. They are Munafiq. Yeah. People just read a history book. I mean, what is ridiculous is, look, if you have, imagine I gave you, uh, imagine you're playing a game of Monopoly. Monopoly is a game where you do, and I yeah. gave you all the streets, and I gave you all the money, and you still lose. I think, you know what, really, you need to, you need to, to, to basically go home. But that's not the way they present but, it to oh, the people. The people do they, not know that. Uh, don't forget that these regimes do not have public accounts. It's not clear how much is coming in the treasury, how much is going out. These things are kept secret. You are, not in Britain. Is, and you are not in Britain, which you have in the budget discussion parliament, even if it's in the parliament, it's very short, only 20 days. But the, it's not like in America where the budget is being discussed uh, 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 up to the last dot for three, four months and all various interests fight ferociously like the dogs. Uh, is account, but, but at least you know how much is coming in, how much is that. We know how much is the American debt, how many bonds are sold daily to the last one. We know that. There you don't know. So they can't tell the people, we don't have enough resources. We are still backward. We could not develop. We, 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 we cannot have military industry because the, nobody is selling us licenses. We have to please them by, by acknowledging or, or uh, acknowledging the existence of Israel so that in return we can get some weapons. And so the arguments are like that never ending because there is no, there is no accountability and no public discussion, a public discourse and a proper accountability. So we said, okay, you claim that, let us have the books, open the books, let us see how much is being spent, how much is in and how much is out. So there's one which is the political and economical, and the other one is, a, is a, from a Sharia point of view. It's a, so here's, for, here's an example. Somebody, somebody mentioned one of the comments around our, post this event, so their voices, including ulama, not government scholars, who said that the hukum on the Gaza for, uh, forces carrying out the uh, saturation attack was no, the, the attack, well, knowing that Israel was hit back uh, disproportionately, resulting in hundreds of thousands of dead, uh, wouldn't would that affect? The, wouldn't that be? Uh, the, 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 the argument they bring is that they're causing the population to suffer for something which has no effect. That's what they are saying, as if it is done. Deliberately, if with no effect, but reality has shown that it is, has effect. You see it now. The effect is clear. And that's the reason they are all now scrambling and calling Israel brutal, calling Israel murderous, and so on. The ones who were yesterday saying we are going in, in the way of normalization, it will take some time, like Saudi Arabia, or it's already done almost and dusted like the Emirates. But the, such argument can be sold to the people by, by deceiving them and by not. Because the because the the the, the other voice of, of Muslim mujahideen, so like for example, they have always uh, tried to attack Al Qaeda, for example, and Bin Laden and so on. That he has invited trouble to the Muslim world, and many even Islamists uh, went along that, along that narrative, not recognizing that Bin Laden deliberately said we will attack them in their own country. So if they come, if they don't come, that's a victory. If they come, then they will sink in the swamp in the Muslim world. We will slaughter them like we did with the Soviet Union. And turn out that Bin Laden is right. He knew his ummah better than them. Do, do you think that the victory of Taliban and so on would have well, this great victory now uh, would, ha would, would have uh, been like that if America did not come and fought for 20 years? You don't get, you don't get victory. You don't get achievement. You don't get uh, liberation. You get uh, progress. By, 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 by surrendering to, uh, to the tyrants and to the uh, imperialists. You get by confrontation. So how, the much is, how much of it, to be example, when we read the Sira, it's very clear, you know, we're, we're acting on hindsight. We're not there at the time. So we pick it up. We know that, for example, an event happens and we already know that the Munafiqin- And the Sira, there were people like that, like the Munafiqin in Uhud, and Munafiqin Uhud was saying, saying if, we, if, it, if we had had any say, we would not have been killed here. If Muhammad has listened to us and we stayed in, 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 in Medina and fought a street fight, we would not have been killed here. And the Quran answered them. How For those of this, who Allah has decided that they will be killed in water, they will be killed in Medina or outside. 
Okay. But these people are cowards. They they are just concerned about themselves, about their own safety. They aren't concerned okay. about that. And the Quran says clearly, you if you have prescribed jihad, betal, and you hate it, and you may hate something which is better for you, and you may love something which is bad for you. So Our no question. Don't know. This is where the disconnect occurs. Yeah. For example, because are... because because people aqidah and the way Islam presents them is presents them in a loop-sided way that you are not allowed to, to drag the people into danger and harm them. That's true. But jihad and fighting in the cause of Allah is never jihad, harm and danger. And in jihad, it's clearly say, say, telling you clearly that you have to stand, stand firm fighting an enemy which may be twice your size. Uh, originally 10 your size, but was each to, 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 to your size. But, uh, but it does not mean that, uh, that, uh, that you have you have a permission not to fight, but it's, you are at liberty to fight even against thousands of your sides if you wish. Nobody can prohibit you that whatsoever. No. Nobody can, can prohibit you that. However, you may choose not to fight with that justification, but you have to, as a leader, you have to justify to the people and explain that to them on these reasons. But we know that these people, what they are, their ruler, all their behavior and all the relation with, with their masters and how they came to power shows clearly that they are not genuine leaders. They are not coming from the midst of the Ummah. They are appointed by the foreigners, by the, by the crusaders, by the invaders, by the colonialists, essentially, or descending from those who have been appointed by the colonialists. They are not grow from the Ummah. So we can say that that seems to be a reasonable excuse. Maybe it's the wrong jihad. No, it's not a wrong jihad. It's clearly getting all these scholars and trying to find me some argument, uh, uh, spin the matter for me now from a Sharia point of view. Ah, oh, yeah, you are endangering the people without achieving anything. While the smooth way of uh, of accepting Israel and building slowly for 20, 30 years and ultimately will prevail. Seems to be that seems to be like a nice argument. And it, it may be sold to some people like Shahid Bolson, who may swallow that sincerely, because he does not know really the history of the matter and know the na nature of these rulers. This argument could have been accepted if it came from Umar ibn Khattab, but it should not be accepted if it comes from Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan or, or Muhammad bin Zaman. Because you can't spin, you can't spin many things. You can find all kinds of excuses. You can turn around and and use all kind of of of, uh, of exceptions. They say, I give you a certain exception and leave it to your own judgment. The question, what is your intention? Are you using the Sharia uh, exception, for example, in the case of necessity, for example, knowing that there's no real necessity of just playing games with the Sharia? Only Allah knows that. But sometimes you have indication for that person from his history, because uh, how he came to power, to recognize that it couldn't be. He couldn't be sincere. But for human being, it's, it's, it's a matter of analysis. For Allah, it's a matter of firm knowledge. We are not in the place of Allah SWT to judge that in that in that conclusive way. But we can, on the balance of evidences, we can we can see, for example, when, when Al Saud claimed that we have to build the country. Gentlemen, you have been having this income of petroleum now for 50, 60 years. In 40, 50 years, by the admission of the brother of Muhammad Salman, half brother, Abdul Aziz, say we missed 40 years of industrial development. If we had started it 40 years ago, we would have been now a major industrial power like China and India. And that's correct. So what have been you doing this 40 years? Where is the wealth cocaine. going? Cocaine huh? and prostitutes. Cocaine and prostitutes on Edra Road. Exactly. You see, so that they're qara'in. Some of them may have may, may have an excuse. They couldn't do other like Abdul Aziz bin Salman, the brother of Muhammad Salman, may have sincerely wanted that, but nobody complied with him. He's a secondary prince for there, and he's too soft. He's not a forceful person who can force that forward. So he may may really have a good intention as a as a person, or as a common Muslim. Although he's a son of Salman, but the son of Salman does not need to be a Satan, a Satan like Salman himself. But he could not enforce himself. The only thing he could is just making that tweet just a few months ago. I mean, and which you. clearly shows the pain that we missed that, this opportunity. It's I good that the tweet came from him. So, I think it's important to draw a line, which is this, that look, people like to 
talk in a very slow, measured way, use big, complex words, and Muslims are bamboozled. It's the same as what the government scholars do. They'll bring a parallel, which is completely unrelated. For example, the most retarded, you know, if you imagine the spectrum, you'll have those people who are charismatic. And then if you take someone who's got like a, if you grew a brain, like a, a monkey brain, almost human, and you, you gave it, subjected it to like hemorrhoids, and then put that in a person, that's, that's the Madkhali argument, like someone like Shamsi. Exactly. So the retarded donkey argument, they try to make parallels between... But, but the Mad, Madkhali is, uh, is, is follow the same the same script of the Jews. They twist the words out of their proper position. So in this issue, for example, with with uh, with uh, Israel, there's no justification to start making parallels with Hudaybiyah. What would negate that? So, for example, saying that, for example, has nothing to do with Hudaybiyah whatsoever. What else has that to do with Hudaybiyah? Having an agreement, having a compromise with Israel, having accepted uh, uh, some kind of it's order. not that having compromise, not have a compromise. What is which compromise Israel you have? Hudaybiyah, the Prophet went to 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 perform Umrah. Makkah and were well, under the control of the Qurayshi, and he went in the in the, in the sanctuary month to perform Umrah. They prevented him, and there was an option either to do it by force or. And he said, "We did not come to fight. We came to perform Umrah. That's it." And the Qurayshi said, "No, you don't perform this year. You perform it next year. That's all. What is there?" They didn't say, "Admit that we are the ruler of Makkah until for eternity, and we have the right to exist." No, he did not admit the right. They are in control of Mecca, and they, the option was either fight and so on. The Quran clarify in Surah al fatih what has happened. And the Quran said, if you have fought the disbeliever, you would have smashed them. But Allah had other plans. Other plans entails, first of all, in that fight, if it had come to a fight, many believers who are hiding the religion in Mecca would have been hurt. That's number one. Secondly, Allah have decided that you will have performed Umrah another time. Thirdly, Allah wanted to neutralize Quraysh so that you can focus on Khaybar because the two major power in, 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 in Hijaz that time, Quraysh and Khaybar, the Arab authority and the Jewish authority, a genuine homegrown authority because Khaybar is a Jewish settlement for centuries. They didn't come absorbing or take it from anybody. It is their land. It is their place. So that you dispatch of Khaybar. After dispatch of Khaybar, Quraysh will be half a weekend and they will be dispatched easier. And this was not clear to the Prophet and even the Sahaba at the time. This, they felt it is, it's a disgrace, that the agreement is a disgrace. And Umar was a, a, the leader of the opposition to that. Until, until, until the Wahi came and said, إِنَّ فَتْحَ لَلَكَ فَتْحَ مُبِينَ So he asked the Messenger, is that Fatih? Is it really an opening? Is it a victory? Say, that's what the Quran says. I don't know how it is victory, but it's victory. That's what Allah says. And then soon after, they went to Khaybar. And this became clear after that. But Hudaybiyah is also enacted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not by anybody, not by anybody's choice. That's only the time of revelation, something like that. Huh? But, but is it permissible to have compromises like that for a certain situation, according to the judgment of the leader? Yes, it is. But the leader who is doing that, we know that he is a, he's a sincere leader. We know that he is qualified. We know that he has a bay'ah. The Prophet did not come on his state because he's a prophet. No, well, as we have discussed in Sahiba, because the people gave him bayah and accepted him as a leader. First the Muhajirun and the rest of the Ansar in the Sahiba. We know that. Not these who are implanted by, 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 by foreign forces or inherited from those who have been implanted. That's what we have there. Abdullah, who gave him power? He inherited from his father, his grandfather. His grandfather is an implant, British implant, because Abdullah, his grandfather, and Faisal, his uh, grand uncle, they betrayed their father, Hussein, who regretted that he cooperated with the British and turned against the British. And they separated from their father and joined the British. And the British uh, compensated them, gave Abdullah Jordan and gave Faisal Syria first. But the French were unhappy with that because it's a violation of the Saks Pico agreement, the secret agreement. So they came by force and kicked him out of Syria. So he went in Europe, begging around the morning and, and then gave him Iraq. <laughs> Imagine. Someone from Mecca who has nothing to do with, with Syria or Iraq whatsoever, the British take him and put him in Syria. The British say, no, gentlemen, Syria is for us. Lebanon, Syria, according to agreements, for us, out. And he was going, going begging in Europe for a couple of years. They say, okay, okay, um, uh, we must reward you for your own treasury time fast and put him as the king of, of Iraq, which was under uh, British occupation. It's a disgrace. These people cannot be trusted. 
We need to be more. While, 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 the, while the prophet can't be trusted because he's the choice of the people, and the people believe in him and they give him bayah. He's not implanted by anybody. In practical terms, though, so the question is: one is the bayah, and the other is in terms of these people, what they rule by. In terms of obviously, it's, it's yeah, kind of exactly, me. exactly, exactly. These no, I mean, people, effectively, these people like, have no bayah. They are the choice of the people. They themselves or their fathers, grandfathers, are implant of of foreign or of uh, foreign forces. And some of them came by coup d'état, which has been now exposed and clarified that foreign for, for, uh, powers were behind that in the element in the uh, uh, spinning down or the, uh, ending the result of the Second World War and abolishing the old imperialism and establishing the new American imperialism like Abdul Nasser, Hosni Zaim, Shishakri, and so on. After um, between forty-five and fifty-five, all the coup d'état around that time until that time are all instigated by foreign forces. That's number one. Secondly, they don't rule with that what Allah has revealed. Th thirdly, they even if they came to the power in an odd way by a historic accident, they they don't they, they don't govern in such a way which is uh, in interest of the people. At least disclosure, openness. Where is the money come from? Where is the money going to? At least, at least, so that people can account. So when say we are not we are not able to do anything, fine, show me. Give me, give me, give me the books. Show me the books. Where are the books? It's, it's, it's so ridiculous. You have some people who are charismatic and they try, try to try to put it on the ummah that how dare you question these people when you have an entire history of treachery. Yeah. The onus is on the person who's articulating this point of view. Say, was there a point where it's like almost saying that like Britain... And that's that's one of the reasons, that's the reason that we are starting exposing the first major treachery and rebellion against the legitimate imam by Muawiyah against Ali ibn Abi Talib and the fabrication of the story that Ali is the one who killed Uthman, who is the one who really killed him, is Muawiyah himself and so on. But that treachery, but most Ahlul Sunnah, they try to explain Muawiyah, say he made the ishtihad and he wanted actually just revenge the blood of Uthman, but he made a mistake. So the disease is very old. That's the reason we are, that's the issue we are discussing. Some, some of you have always objected and will offend the people and so on. No, no, we have to go to the beginning of the, of the deviation. And you have to apply the hadith which has come up with Al-Fi Al-Baghiyah and the other hadith which clearly shows that and the Prophet said, what about that? And there are many hadith, some of them mutawatir about Al-Fi Al-Baghiyah. Fi Al-Baghiyah cannot fi be mujtahida. Baghi is not mujtahid. Baghi is transgressor. Transgressor is not a mujtahid. A mujtahid is never transgressor. A mujtahid may, 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 may make a mistake, but he's still mujtahid. Cannot be described as, as Baghi. Or as criminal. So what next? Yes, negate the meaning of ishtihad. Still, you find this part in books of Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah that Muawid made an ishtihad. He's wrong. Ali is right. But it's ishtihad. It is not baghi. It's not ijram. It's not criminal act. And the same applies to rule after him. Came like a general, general direction. It went to extreme even in the later Bani Umayyah. Uh, uh, it, it culminated in the called Pa'a Shamiya. The Shami or the Levant obedience. The Levant obedience is that uh, you you obey the the one in charge, even in if he commands haram. It's his responsibility. You have no responsibility. Meaning Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is ordering you to obey him by disobeying him. It's clear kufr. This Ta'a Shami was a widespread madhab in the late time Bani Umayyah. It's even worse than today. History is checkered. Need to be cleaned. But that is if you work with the matter from the root up philosophically is. But sometimes you need to go to that back so that people wake up. So, okay, what happens next? So let's look at Palestine now, because I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, I'm be opening up to questions from 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 the audience now. Uh, I've been asking in dribs and drabs. So right now, for example, what do you think is going to happen in Palestine now, and what's our responsibility, and what do you think will happen uh, in the, amongst the wider wider ummah? So uh, let's be as the responsibility is clear. If, uh, clarify the issue, especially if this is a cancerous entity which has no right to exist, whatever the people claim, whatever those claim, and say that courageously, that these term terrorists and so on, glorification of terrorists are faulty, faulty term, and confront the regime here, for example, in Britain, by like I, I when they established the first time, they in, in established something called glorification of terrorism in the time of Blair, I was in, I think, in a, in a, in a, in a television program with George Galloway. And we said, we say the Palestinian, I think, I think we said Hamas at the time specifically, they are, they are freedom fighters, they are not terrorists. 
and we are waiting for a law cause again, a, a, a lawsuit against us. Until today, no lawsuit came. They use that to terrorize the people, undermine their confidence, make them afraid. I think the people passed that stage. The demonstrations have shown that. Yes, there are some, some blunders like this guy who, uh, several months ago, who pleaded guilty and so on and was wearing, uh, wearing some, some, some shirt or saying, praising Hamas or something. I don't know what he is wearing. Maybe he's wearing some, some uh, language which is not correct. Like Sheikh Faisal, Faisal language is definitely not correct and invited the, the accusation of soliciting murder because he's stupid. He did not use the correct language, maybe like, but I don't know what's that. And most likely his lawyer advised him, it's better to have a, a light sentence, just plead guilty. Nobody should plead guilty. That's if it comes to a, a case and insist to go to court and insist on a, on a jury trial and have, have a case, public case, and insist that the trial should be public. If possible, if that's uh, uh, she, I think it's, it's possible. That's the right of of the one uh, 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 defendant. I think I'm not sure. We can check with lawyers. But if they say I want the file file to be public and the media to attend, for example, and make a media a media circus about that, for example, and continue with the demonstration so But we have to continue the education of people. So listen, people, it has nothing to do with the divine promise of an Israel ancient time. That's all gone and forgotten. We are dealing with imperial apartheid. Uh, Nazi style state implanted by imperial power, Britain and America, who everyone agree, even their own citizen, that their policy in at least in the 20th century and 19th century is purely imperialistic and blood sucking. Whatever they claim otherwise, except a small minority of, uh, of regime people and oligarchs. And even the common population, their labor class, their people, they recognize these, these politics are imperial. They are apartheid. They are Nazi-like politics. And these are the ones who implanted this entity. Forget about the Old Testament and the New Testament and the, and the stories of the time past. They may be true, may be false. Now, that's what we have is a cancerous entity implanted by the imperialist or by state who behave towards other nations, almost like, and especially third world nations like Nazi states. We should remind everyone, listen, don't come with, uh, with Hitler and his, uh, and his Holocaust. Uh, uh, remind yourself, like when we talk to an Englishman, remind yourself, ask, ask the people who know history what Churchill, the so-called Democrat, quote unquote, did to the Kenyan 200,000 who were in, in concentration camps in Kenya. They were killed by crushing their testicles by a special device developed for crushing the testicles. When you get castrated, but the castration is done so brutally that the majority died as, as, as a result of this crushing. He did not have even the dignity to castrate them in a gentle way and under anesthesis with a special plier developed. Yeah, Kenya. That's Churchill, the hero of the Second World War. So don't come with this. Stop there. Look at yourself first. For those who pretend to believe that Israel has the right to exist and they have suffered the Holocaust, you are the Holocaust maker. You are the one who instituted apartheid. And then when Abayad in South Africa, for example, collapsed, collapsed, you bailed out and declared Mandela to be a hero and will come there everywhere just to cover your shame. We have to carry that falsehood. I think that's our function. Obviously, collecting money, helping with, with medical support, all of these things. That's clearly that within our realm. But the, the intellectual and the philosophical and the Historic exposition of the fact is of utmost importance. As for here, there, how the conflict will develop is not clear. There are various scenarios. One scenario is that they will, the siege will continue for, we, we hear every, every couple of days, the Israeli army sometimes, or the British say we are ready for the incursion, but uh, uh, the weather was bad, so we postponed it. Or there's a negotiation about releasing the, they call it hostages. We should not. Uh, Ever accept the word hostage. These are hostages, prisoners of war. These are the hostages. So they are going back and forth, back and forth. Possibly this is also a kind of a psychology because this is called the psychology of, of stressing, like you stress a steel bar, you twist and then straight, twist and then until it breaks. That's maybe they think this will work with, with, with Hamas as well. But the people have been under siege now for 16 years. I don't think uh, threatening to invade and then re releasing. And say, for several weeks and months will have an effect. Unlikely, very unlikely. So let's assumption number one, 
the Israelis lost their, lose their mind and ignore the American, because the American advice is clear. The American general is there and Blinken rushed to the area to tell them, don't even do an incursion. That will be your demise. Don't, don't do that. Well, nobody can help you in that case. You will be finished. So they listened at least, but we should not forget that their leadership, including that they are blinded by rage and fear for themselves. And they may commit a mistake or in a moment of madness, they decide to incur. So let's assume an incursion happened in the near future, in a few, few coming days and weeks. Let's say until the end of October, roughly, or something like in two weeks from now. Then this will be, بإذن الله, I almost certain I would make an oath, but we should not do that. But God willing, they will be smashed and defeated badly. It will be not in one day. Don't think it will be finished in one day. It will take several days, maybe weeks of fighting, but they will suffer such losses and the army will start disintegrating. You cannot exclude that maybe someone will make a coup d'etat inside Israel and the society will continue this disintegration because the society is disintegrating and many people are now in the airports and the seaports queuing for to leave the country. That will accelerate. But also the brutality of the fights and the number of, uh, and the and the uh, stories about victories and again will inflame the West Bank. The West Bank is inflamed. obviously Hezbollah will attack from the north. Both both inflammation points will inflame the West Bank. Now we have some inflammation, but minimal. We have some people using IDEs to destroy Israeli tanks and markabas and jeeps and uh, security units. But this is only one here, one there. It will become systematic, exactly like it happens in the in the liberation war of Iraq before Zarqawi messed everything up. That's number one. Fatah made start disintegrating and the uh, the Ansit Abbas. So the West Bank will, will inflame. So they have to invade the West Bank. And that will be then the end, really. That will be just a matter of few weeks and months at the side is gone. The other one is the slow death of Israel. They keep going back and forth, sieging and so on, negotiating more food, no food, uh, medication, no medication, international condemnation, no international condemnation, back and forth. Obviously, international condemnation will mount more and more and more. And we see, for example, look at, at uh, the, 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 posi the extreme position uh, of, the, of the Colombian president. This is extreme, but the others will follow him. For example, at the beginning, Lula, the, the Brazilian president, was still talking about Israel's right of self-defense. But later statements are different. But the, the, the one who was really forging ahead in a, in a shocking way, an unbelievable way, is the Colombian president. The first day he said, if I were in Palestine, I will fight with the Palestinians. Then a couple of days later, he said Israel is a Nazi state. And the, the word Nazi state is having a very heavy and very specific meaning in the Western psyche. Even the American embassy objected to that. And obviously the Israeli embassy issued some, some nasty statement against him. And next day he kicked out the ambassador, the president of Non-Grata. Imagine a Catholic more, more, more all president, of our rulers. More independent president will follow this, this four steps. Today, I think today, Putin said Russia is, 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 is going along the way to cooperate to the Muslim world against, against the Western aggression. The statement is, not, is, is very weighty. The philosopher of, of, of Putin, Dugin, said clearly that any acceptance of ceasefire or any settlement with Israel now is a betrayal to the Islamic world. The Islamic world should cooperate with the Orthodox world against the West and its LGBT, etc., and similar things like that. So it's becoming almost like an ideological and religious war with Eastern Orthodoxy and Islam on one side and the LGBT <laughs> Sodomist, so don't want go more on the other side. At the beginning, that's the only statement, but statement from such heavy weight people, either in philosophy or in state leadership, is of importance. It hints something, so that will increase. So if it goes like that, more of these statements will increase, and more anti-Muslim forces will explode. Like for example, India has now explored the most most vicious anti. Uh, Muslim Islamophobic sites and and campaign is coming from India and Indian assets in in America and, and so on. 
in America, we have rebellion in in the in the administration. We have the resignation submitted in the in, in the in, in the foreign office in another department. And you cannot exclude that even in these two aircraft carriers, some some rebellion will come and they say, "We are not willing to this. Is not going to work." What is the likelihood of any of the bordering countries in Egypt erupting? I was with with uh, um, uh, Palestine erupting, for example, Egypt, Jordan. Any is, it is it, it, the, the only the only thing we, it, 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 that they can may come in or interfere or help only if the current regimes are are uh, are unseated. It must be preceded by coup d'état. So or by the regime lifting the light flag. For example, in Jordan, let's assume in Jordan, the, the events develop such a way that the West Bank starts being inflamed. And the, the flame, which is already in the East Bank now, it's going there, but not to the level that people are willing to go into confrontation, shooting and, and, and fighting against each other. It may go there. We, there's no guarantee that the army will not split and break. And there will be wide disobedience, like in the Karama battle in 68. They ignored the commands from the palace. The palace was clearly with Israel. And the arrangement was that you go in and finish this Palestinian and uh, relieve us from their headache. But the local commander did not cooperate. So this call, for example, uh, Hezbollah, for example, had a call yesterday uh, outside some embassies to call on the Muslim armies to, to rebel. That's a good call that we should be supported? Yeah, that's that's a good call. But it's, 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 uh, it's an imaginary call. It is the same thing that Talib al-Nusra. It is not a structured call based really. Was there any real work in the depth of the army working through the time? I don't know. I'm not sure they have done the proper work because they have a definition of Talib al-Nusra, which is the wrong one from the beginning and has never worked in time past. But it may work now. So basically, it's it's something true. tangible within your capacity, for example, tangible within our capacity is to, is to effectively be vocal no. in the UK. I the, the the best call now is to call the people to move in these areas and the siege embassies uh, 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 go to, to military bases, their own military bases, their own armies and and shame the army and spit at them. They are cowards. You are not doing your duty. Your duty is to protect the border and protect the nation. But you are not doing that. You are just eating and developing big bellies until they move. I think addressing the people is the best way. Addressing the armies have chosen through history not to be of any significance. Can I, can I add something there as well? Mm -hmm. Spit at these mud khalis as well. Spit at them. You picture that. Oh, yeah, that's, baby. that's no doubt. That, that's, that's, picture that's, that dead baby, then go picture that mud khali. That dead baby is a daughter of a, is a child of a deviant, according to them. It's their fault. They're deviants. They're doing shirk in there because there's a qabr there. Yeah, they're the exactly. ones who the, that. Picture it. That, that's Picture that's, that's it. I would I would say uh, uh, make that as a side issue. Just when it need to be mentioned, it may mention that. And when a Madhali leader or one of these mashayikh of the scholar of the leader of the leadership is speaking, tell the people don't listen to this guy. This is a munafiq kafir. Just use the word munafiq kafir. Don't worry about him. This is a sellout. Also, also UAE, 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 how many people they have? People hmm? who are UAE, bin Bayer, all these guys completely. Like being chained to like shame, men, mention them by name and shame them until tell they, they follow them. Don't follow them. These are munafiq kafir. They are sellouts. Yeah, they're sellouts. Of Somewhere within that spectrum, anyway. Yeah, but I I I, I would say uh, don't allocate too much energy to that. You know, maybe 10 15 percent energy. That energy will be focusing to the people, moving them, energy. adjusting them practical steps. Like for example, demonstrating in front of various embassies and uh, putting pressure on embassies, uh, possibly throwing, for example, Molotovs against them. Yes, this is not, no, no, uh, no, not, not, sanctioned by, not sanctioned by international in some sense, but it, 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 it must be done to express that your presence here, we don't sanction. We are the people not sanctioning your presence, even if the regime, this will be then actually throwing the Molotov cocktail against the regime. The regime who have allowed you in, is not our regime. We don't acknowledge it. But your you presence here is not acceptable. You have to leave. If they if, and, and, and it has an effect. For example, the Americans issued a statement recently asking all their citizens to leave immediately. Both, uh, uh, I think, Bahrain, uh, Lebanon, and Emirat. Immediately. So they're afraid for their own citizens.
that it may may they may come between the fronts. Although no, the usual habit in the Muslim world that they don't target foreigners normally, but there will be some factions like Daesh and so on. They may do that because of their wrong interpretation. But if the masses come for a demonstration against an embassy and ask him to leave, that will be actually a demonstration against the regime. Because the embassy could say, we were invited by our regime. We don't recognize this regime. We have forgotten about him long ago. Leave. Now, obviously, the regime will be in, a, in, a, in a compliance with international, uh, with international law and it will establish custom, send soldiers and send the police to protect. The people could 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 initiate uh, tell the soldier you should step aside you should not work with the regime that could start fermenting a movement against the regime and the revolution, so make make the foreign embassies and so on as a focus point to undermine the regime. Don't think that's the embassy the enemy. The enemy is the regime, but use that as an inflammation point because it is like a, like a, a psychological reference point. Sometimes people the general masses need a psychological reference point. And the embassies of, of, of America and so on, and uh, especially where there's an Israeli embassy. Anyway, the Israelis closed their embassy now in Egypt and in Morocco, and they got their stuff out because they know it's an inflammation point. Anyway, they will no way not wait for that. If the embassy is now empty, then firebomb it, burn it down. Yeah. It has no respectability anymore. There's nobody who has a protection. The protection is actually for the diplomats, not for the building. Torch it down. Make a symbolic act, for example. But it's up to the Egyptian people and the local leadership to decide. And they will decide in the right way. But the purpose should be, the people should be educated. This is a symbolism not against Israel itself. Yes, it appears like Israel, against the regime who got them first in the place, who invited them in that place, who allowed them to come here. Now it's this time of reconning. Now, is it now, for example, the Israeli embassy in Egypt is the, how, how many years now? 50 years, 40 years, something like that. How much benefit has that brought to Egypt? They just look look at just plain, simple benefits. How much progress did Egypt enjoy? How much progress in agriculture, in water security? Just the opposite. The same Israeli are gloating that the, the Nahda Dam in, in Ethiopia will be able to squeeze the Egyptian and make them die and thirst if necessary. This is an enemy. You don't let the enemy in your own country and give them an, give them an embassy. Should not have been done. And then from this inflammation point, then the inflammation will continue to going to the to uh, uh, the palace of the republic and to the president, and possibly infect some military so they can move to a coup d'état. Various actions like that demonstrate against the, the military barracks. Where are you? Are you sleeping or eating, or just having nice uh, nice uh, nice sex with your wives while your brothers are being slaughtered? Things like that. So they have to be on the ground. These kind of efforts would have to be in those places, because otherwise, but uh, the problem is that is the local leadership sufficiently educated and savvy? I think there's enough enough in Egypt, for example, like Hezbo Amal, the Islamic Worker Party, their certain organization. Depending on not these these Salafi Hezb Noor or Hezb Zur, the, the the party of falsehood, calling itself party party of light. Definitely, they are sell out. Anyway, they have become irrelevant. I barely hear anything about them because they are dead. I just this uh, they're just employees of the intelligence services. They are, they are banned. They are finished. These are gone. So, um, so I've got there's a lot of questions in the in the comments, uh, but to be honest yeah. with you, it's, it's probably too much to go through. Yeah. Um, I would say that for the people in the comments, our Zoom links are always public. So that you, we we not we don't hide anything. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Basically, if you want, I mean, if if there's an appetite, we could always continue this subject next week. Uh, you know, and and if you just join on the Zoom, you're by definition you're using a computer or a mobile to access it. In which case, you by extension should be able to access the Zoom link as well. I'm just going to post the Zoom link uh, in the chat. Um, so you're more than welcome. Next week we can carry on the discussion because there is a bit of back and forth. Um, there's one one very quick question. Uh, what's the likelihood of Iran being uh, roped in as well? Being brought in? Yeah. Uh, get, get involved. Uh, uh, there's Iran's faraway, so the involvement. The only in, uh, thing is that if if some uh, because of some mistake or because of some mischief of the Israelis, they can uh, draw the Americans in. 
and drawing in meaning a confrontation with Iran somewhere, either in Syria or directly with Iranian forces. Then there will be a, a, a war in the Gulf. And then um, I can tell you, if, there, if it happens, uh, a war in the Gulf, then it will be, um, the, it will be painful. It will be plenty of blood. Definitely, Americans have considerable assets, not in Idid and the, the base in Qatar and in Bahrain. These bases will be smashed in the few first days. It will be gone. But they have the Hugo Garcia, they have B-52s there with a heavy bomber. They will be able to carpet bomb various areas and that's their facilities in Iran. It will be benefit, pay, very painful, but it will end with the demise of the American fleet and the American presence. That's it. And the Americans know that. There's no way they can win a battle against Iran without having 400, 500, 600,000 soldiers in the field. And even there, there's no guarantee of winning. And there's no way to land them anywhere where they can stage an attack. Where they should land it? In Turkey? Turkey is now very hostile to them. Already Turkey was very hostile in the, in, the, in the battle to invade Iraq at that time. They don't allow them to use Ingenic. That's number one. That's in 2003. That's, that's gone. Uh, for sure, now it will be impossible, especially they are burned out. They are extremely angry with the Americans because they have support of the Kurdish and the pro-Israeli fa factions in Syria against Turkish interests. So even out of nationalistic grounds, let alone Islamic grounds. That's number one. Where else? In Iraq, it's impossible. The Iraqi are now fighting against the bases, and, <laughs> and the bases have no answer. It's just silent. They say there are some drones who intercepted them, and there are a few injuries, but nobody is killed. That's all what they, the statement coming from there. They try to keep things at below the level of inflammation. Where else? Kuwait is not sufficiently deep and, and capable of accommodating enough forces uh, and uh, structure them before the attack. So the river is out of question. It will be, it will be destroyed before that and the oil fields. Emirates and Oman is the same thing. The only place which may be is maybe Pakistan in, in Baluchistan area. And this is such far away and deep, that's not, not very conce conceivable. And in addition, it will obviously uh, alert, uh, alert China uh, to, to do some counter action, even by arming, uh, arming the Belushi, arming the Afghani extra and so on. Assuming that the, the regime in Pakistan will survive such an invitation to America, I don't think it will be. It, they were not. They, they couldn't do that even against Taliban, except undercover, not publicly and clearly. So they won't be so stupid. Whatever they stupid and a and traitor they are to to get the four hundred, five hundred. Where else? Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. Who are they going to fly or in there? They have to fly over China or Russia. <laughs> it's not possible. And obviously, nobody is talking about nuclear weapons and nuclear war. That's the end of uh, the, the end of America and the end of the, the nuclear. Uh, the, the, the one anyone starting a nuclear war will be its end. Will be will be the end of that. Even Israel with that nuclear capability, it will be its end. Whom to attack with nuclear weapons? Because the, the death and the, dis, the decline and destruction of Israel will be coming from inside, from uh, the old the forty eight the called occupied areas before nineteen forty eight. The Palestinian there will be energized. The West Bank, Gaza, Hezbollah, and East Jordan. That's that's what we're even 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 the involvement in Egypt may be may be forsaken. It's enough that the Egyptian army uh, come uh, come up to Gaza and helps the real Gaza with food and and medicine and so on. That's it. And if the Israelis do more, they they punish the Israelis for doing more. That's it. So there's no reason for using nuclear weapon against them. And the use of nuclear weapon will be the end of the, the the end for the one who use it. Special against a nuclear power. Assalamu alaikum, Prof. Uh, yeah, so I, I've got very uh, few uh, points I'd like to share with you. Uh, so just going to the to, to the uh, to the um, saying that you said when um, uh, that the Egyptian army can interfere to the border of uh, of Gaza, I, I, I would really suggest that there's no need for any Arab armies at their current leadership. There is no need for no, the current, you know, this can't, uh, with the constitution, but it will not happen. Exactly. So if, if the regime collapses and they start moving, then all what they need is just to, to be there and insist that Gaza will get food and, shel and shelter. Yes, that's and, the... And, and engage the Israelis of necessity. But this yes. will not happen. Most likely this will not happen this way anyway. Exactly, because the current leadership is very rotten and uh, already the, the Palestinians oh, yeah, are doing very, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the Palestinians are already doing a fantastic job. And I would also say that um, in, in time past, um, during the history of this conflict, 
all Arab regimes and all Arab armies have been uh, all colluding uh, with Israel against Palestine. You know, they say to the Palestinian, uh, no, don't fight, we will fight for you. Do not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is good. This is all. On their behalf. You are right. This, this is all history. This will never repeat. This is gone and forgotten. No, but exactly. saying, if, if something happened, if something happened in Egypt, a change, all that's needed is that. And this is the maximum. The, yeah. only, the only different the only different place which is maybe of significance is that the Jordanian regime is dispatched off and the Jordanian who are Palestinian the Palestinian who are Jordanian the same thing start crossing over uh, military and non-military and supplementing and supporting the people in uh, in in the in the West Bank that's it yeah. that's the only thing which may be uh, adding the ice on the cake that may be required or yeah. at least in, in, in a medium or later phase. But in all other places, just stay away. Don't don't interfere. That's yes. the best. Uh, focus on your focus on your countries. Topple the governments. Get rid yeah, of the yeah, uh, yeah. monarchic rulers and so on. Yeah, then yeah, we yeah. can like do. No, that. no. I assume that, I assume they have this pass even with the monarchic rulers. No yes. need for the new rulers to get involved more than that. Yes. Uh, the second point, Professor, is I would uh, uh, I want to say that uh, uh, Israelis are following the steps of the colonial the colonialist West just for the sake of justifying their murderistic action. So for example, um, uh, the, the, uh, during the last century, um, most of Europe was a nationalistic um, uh, state, right? So, uh, so when they, um, uh, so, so when Israel was created, they created in the same model, a, non, a nationalistic yeah, state. It's, a, a it's, it's, like state. It's, 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 a, it's a European, the Zion, Zionism is a European secular, even atheist program. Absolutely, absolutely. Has that to, well, that's the reason I say, when we talk about Israel and Israeli and Israeli politics, we should use the word Zionism, not the word Jew, uh, Judaism, because honestly, Judaism has very little to do with that. They yes. appeal to it because the majority of the so-called Jews, uh, even the majority of the Jews uh, around the beginning of the 20th century until the 20s, 30s, 40s, are cultural Jews. They're barely practicing. There's a minority which are practicing, these are adamant anti-Israeli, like Menatorai Kata and so on. But the non-practicing, they are just cultural. Like, for example, now in Britain, it seems to be the majority have called themselves Christian as cultural Christian. They have a cultural history and tradition called Christian, but they barely, many of them do not believe even there is a resurrection. I mean, yes. resurrection after death, not the resurrection of Isa. It's just Isa, or Christianity is just a symbolism of some, a set of moral values and historic uh, maxims and things like that which is more or less cultural, rather than even celebrating. I, I know family here, uh, uh, she split from her husband. The husband insists that the kids must, 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 must celebrate Christmas, although he's an atheist, because he think uh, and said, not to celebrate Christmas, it's child abuse. <laughs> and he's an atheist, because it's cultural for him. So this is a cultural Christian, although he's an atheist. The same with most Jews. So they use that, the, the most leader of Zionism in the 19th century, like Herzl and so on, who are atheists, used it to establish a new nation in which they can be the business leader and the owner, because Herzl himself was married to, uh, to a, a lady from the Rothschilds, okay? So what we have essentially is that few people, atheists, adopted Zionism because it would make them capitalist billionaires and so on, and they are building their their kingdom and their country on the skulls of the Jews. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what that's essentially. Yeah. So we have to we have to bring that forward to educate the Jews. You have to bail out there. It, Don't it, it, join your history with these criminals. Exactly. I'm going to here very quickly. Um, one, one another thing that I'm finding is also, you know, um, some people have a wish list as well. And for example, I wish. I was having this conversation just a few minutes ago before we start, just before we started the Halakha. Um, basically, it's almost fantasy land whereby if only I had a millennium falcon from Star Wars, I could fix this problem. So in a sense that the, the idealism of Muslim armies, idealism of tomorrow getting Khilafah without actually doing the work. That's another thing that the Ummah yeah, really needs to have. To, to, if we're not on the ground in the Muslim lands, there's, there's a limited scope. So there's... It's important, I suppose, that we we coordinate with other Muslims. Like, for example, there's a lot of good stuff coming from uh, people like Islam 21C, Five Pillars. Sheikh Haytham Haddad is a one-man band as well. I think Absolutely. Very Absolutely. There must be cooperation. 
you cannot you can't just uh, become sectarian exclude yourself in a corner like even if his uh, did participate i think in the demonstration yesterday that's the first time they participated they had their own one. They, that's the same check they have their own one they oh, oh they own one. one that's that's again a mistake that they have one separate one is is or, or, or already a sign of splitting and not bringing the umma under one cover that's number one secondly the calls to the army are shown the same thing like talab al nusra the same dream world which has nothing to do with the reality and their presence in in the uh, presence in the cultural domain their presence in in the discourse general discourse is minimal or, or non-existent that that has to but i i, I don't want now to indul indulge in the criticism of hizb tahrir or any other group but the moment you go in this through this avenue this is the, the recipe for failure on a relate oh great he's gone again he's gone one second Bear with me, I'm trying to get a hold of the doc. Apologies for that. The uh, Sheikh's uh, connection has gone again. Inshallah, I've just been on the call to him, so I couldn't really type anything. Uh, he will be, will be back online soon. Um, I know there's a lot of questions here. We can't really get to all of them. We can, we can, we can um, effectively schedule some for future. Um, just so, circling back to some of the questions about, like for example, voting with uh, friends of Al-Aqsa. Uh, sorry, not voting, but marching. In a march, I know this has been discussed before with the uh, previous instances with the sheikh. There's no issue with you marching with a with a group of people. There's a Sharia principle which is everything is permitted until evidence restricts. And I repeat, everything is permitted until evidence restricts. The evidences in Kitab al-Tawheed reached a level of Tawatur to back this premise. And this has been put forward to many people. So if you're marching in a group, and there's people who are rallying on one specific issue about Palestine. There's nothing wrong with you going with someone else. 
It may be a, it's a different issue if you pick up a communist flag and say, I am marching under communism. I believe in communism. I'm an atheist. Believe, I believe in atheism and communism. That's a different issue. If you're marching under something, a generic ban for us, for something that is not prohibited, there is no issue with that. So being in this march with uh, the likes of Friends of Al-Aqsa, etc., there's no problem with that. Even Palestine Solidarity Council, to for someone to prohibit it, you need to bring the evidence. So that's just to cover that. There's, there's a hell of a lot of questions in the in the chat. So unfortunately, we haven't been able to get to all of them. I was going to get to Abu Staif's uh, call. Um, just bear with it. Hopefully, he should be coming online shortly. In terms okay. of uh, so, so, so meanwhile, while uh, while the while the professor is still connecting, I would just go with um, uh, some few points. Maybe it will be useful for anyone who will listen. So basically, uh, in our camp, we've got some people, you know, saying, how about, you know, we resist in a peaceful manner? How about we don't uh, trigger a bigger anger from Israel because, you know, it's going to be a disproportionate um, uh, retaliation and so on. And, uh, they, you know, uh, I, I find it strange because uh, because, uh, inshallah, those people who have um, who have um, died in, in Gaza right now, they are inshallah shuh shuhada, they are martyrs. Right. But uh, uh, but what about the 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 people who have died during those 16 years of siege? You know, people cannot find medicine. They cannot go to find uh, to get cured uh, or to get hospitalized outside of Gaza. Gaza is very limited in resource. While we have two million uh, population living there, you know, the, 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 they have only two kilometers um, uh, in sea just to get fish, and most of the time they they, they get like. Um, Fish poisoning because of lack of um, uh, the, uh, uh, because because the, the 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 fishing area is not too big so 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 that so that it it, it it the the water the, the seawater can be easily poisoned due to uh, uh, dirtiness and environmental biohazards and so on and uh, let alone that uh, we we have limited amount of food water and so on so if you look at the whole, full picture during those sixteen years you would see that this siege that was imposed by Israel has caused a tremendous amount of suffering on Gazans, more than uh, the, 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 the death and casualty that uh, this current conflict uh, has caused. So inshallah, we, we, we consider all, the, all those who, who have been killed martyrs, but let, let, let's look at the whole picture. Let's see the victims of the siege, not only the victim of the current conflict. So, uh, yeah. salam alaikum, prof. Yeah. Plus, also, I wish we had that for courage of that six-year-old because they have seemed to have a lot more strength than us in terms of making a stand. Yeah. Absolutely. From men standing up saying this because they're on Rabat. They are warriors on Rabat. They're doing Rabat without even having to fire a gun just by being there. Imagine, imagine someone come up to you and said, "Hey, you're starving. You're hungry. Here's a million dollars to go relocate somewhere else," and they turn it down. I don't know what's, but you offer that to a government dog scholar, he will bite your hand for it, or less than that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, the, also looking at the whole picture, as, as Abu uh, uh, as, as said, is, is, uh, is very important because 16 year siege has enormous more casualties and suffering than just a short period of pain. In any case, pain and suffering is, is at this by, by what Allah Shana says, Kayu in Nabi and Katar Mahuri Buna Kathir, Pamao Hanulima Ashamu Fisabi Lahi, or Mabaku Mastakan. Wallah, you have Mustabi, or Makana Kono Milan Karo, or Banakina Dum, and Extrafer Fiamin, or Tabitakaman, or Sunna, or Common Kathleen. How many prophets have been fighting with, with many people who are Rabbani, people who are connected to Allah, and they did not become weak? Or surrendered because of that, what they suffered in the sake of Allah. In the case of Fisabilla, if it's Fisabilla, you should not be surrendered or be weak. And whatever, they, and they, they were in this persevering and enduring. And all what they said is that they attributed the, the losses and failure to their own shortcomings. The only said what they said is that, Oh Allah, forgive us our sins and shortcomings and firm our feet and give us victory over the disbelievers. So that's it. Uh, whatever suffering and so on is most likely because it's some negligence and mistakes of the past from your side. It's not from Allah, it's from you, from you. But uh, you learn from that and try to overcome in the future. But at the moment, ask for forgiveness and stand firm.
and study it and correct it in the future. And that's what is happening stage by stage by the Palestinians. For example, uh, the fact the just I want to comment, I know that's very offensive for many who fat how you believe in fat. The fact that fat is now just watching as if they are like the snake, which is being uh, being, uh, being uh, hypnotized by the snake uh, master uh, and uh, unable to move against Abbas or do anything relevant, although their number is considerable, there about 70,000 fighters. Yes, a, a faction have split, another faction, smaller faction has split a few days ago, but the rest are still watching, waiting for Abbas to give command. The Abbas Mirza, the Baha'i Kafir, uh, is showing that they that 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 state of affairs because of the sins and the mistakes they have in the past they they the, what they did in the past was not fighting for the sake of allah they're fighting for dunya fighting for nationalism fighting for socialism etc and this is the pay the payout time comes now you, you are not firm you don't have the internal composure you don't have the the guidance the enlightenment in your eyesight and insight to make the right decision the right decision for them is now the following the, the military commander of them marches to Abbas and remove him and take over and start exactly there in the west of the bank what uh, what what Hamas did in the uh, in Gaza that's the way it goes. but he cannot see it either he doesn't want to see it because he's, he's himself a corrupt uh, or, or a traitor uh, personality or he's blinded he cannot see it because the past transgression and and sins and shortcomings are coming to haunt you you can't see the reality Allah does not open your eyes if you did not do the work before that. There is no free, there is no, no free lunch. They're there not no free lunch. lunch. They did, for them, there's just a attrition, attrition, attrition until you got nothing left and you think, oh, what happened? I've uh, got a question um, uh, related to an ayah. Uh, brothers asked very patiently. Uh, you know that ayah in, uh, in uh, um, Nisa, I think, uh, what, uh, ayah 4, it says, um, and we mm-hmm. said after Pharaoh to children of Israel dwell in the land, um, and when there comes the promise of the hereafter, after we will we will bring you forth in one gathering, and then. Mm-hmm. Later on, it says, and we decreed for the children of Israel in scripture that indeed you shall do mischief on earth twice. Yeah, and that's what is right. Yeah, what, what, what's the question? What, what What is Allah telling us about Bani Israel in these ayahs? And it's uh, read, read, uh, uh, do you have the most have in front of you? Read from the beginning of the story. I don't, I don't know. Well, he's, he's referred me to this. He just gave me an extract of this, and I'm trying to find the ayah itself. I wasn't successfully able to locate it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, Perhaps we can maybe we can circle back to this next week, maybe because uh, if it's got, if I need to search for it and stuff. Yeah, if you, if you want. Uh, Abu Steph, do you want to come on the mic? You're more than welcome. If you want to jump on the mic. If Abu Mahab has a mushaf nearby or some anyone having a mushaf should open to Surah Al-Isra and read us for this. Uh, yeah. okay, Just give me the tip of the ayah, inshallah, I will, I will locate it for you. Okay, follow Isra, Isra. Let me just see if I can post it. It, it search for the word Lafifa. There's only one place in the Quran the word Lafifa. It's Ulu or second. U L U U U W. What does that mean? Oh, 17. Sorry. Cryptic message there. Okay. And we made it. Okay. So this is I. Wakadaina ila ila bani Israela fil kitab. So this is the the eye itself. Before, before, before. I'm saying before. I know. I know what where you are. Yeah, yeah. So before, 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 go before. Better start from the beginning of the surah. The beginning is Subhanallah the Asra, this is Ra, then then another break. Start. Translation, no, no need for translation. That's about the Isra. Next ayah, this another issue now comes here. Yeah, yeah, next that we 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 gave Musa the book and made it guidance to Bani Israel. Do not uh, do not choose or appoint beside me any any guardian. Yeah, next. 
ذرية من حملنا بني هو ار بني اسرائيل ذرية من حملنا مع نوح انه كان عبدا شكورا ذا ديسندنت فروم ذا بيبل هو اون ذا شيب وذ نوا نوا ووز ا ثانكفول ان ابريشيتنج سليف يا اوكي اننا قدينا الى بني اسرائيل في الكتاب لن تفسد لا لا قبل بيفور ذات بيفور ذات يو جامب سم وات اور سمثينج افتر عبدا شكورا ذرية من حملنا مع نوح انه كان عبدا شكورا The straight away mm-hmm. after that is وقدينا الى بني اسرائيل في الكتاب لا لا تفسدا دنا في الارض تفسدنا في الارض this is the ayahs about the fasad for all twice etc now there's that there's a old disagreement uh, about about the meaning of this this fasad and uh, and, uh, and uh, arrogance on earth twice uh, is it something in the past which is con- uh, strengthened by the fact that they have been that the mentioning of the masjid and the masjid has been the the the, the enemies of Bani Israel or the uh, the strong people who came and 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 uh, occupied their land and and uh, uh, and uh, entered the, the holy sanctuary uh, that we have historically twice this event one in, by Nebuchadnezzar okay first time 580 or something like that five plus minus before Christ and one uh, in 60 uh, 230 after Christ uh, so these you have two historic occasions which these two are uh, these two occasions fit correctly there's another point of view which is advocated by Bassam Jarrah and others is that that's it refers the second one refers to in the mustaqbal but i disagree with that i think when we come inshallah and tafsir to that we will get it discussed the very details about that so i believe that's all in the past is not nothing in that in the future that's all in the past these two two facets two exaltation to arrogance in the lands and the corruption on earth done by Bani Israel the first time before the Babylonic example and they punished by the by Nebuchadnezzar coming invading the country and entering the holy sanctuary and destroying it and the second one the Romans doing the same job roughly the same job even worse a little bit later after the destruction of the temple they were scattered over the world all over the world because of the rebellion of Bar Kokhba in 130 plus minus uh, uh, anno domini, okay? And then after that, carry on. Uh, sorry, he's just he's saying, what's the first and the second rise? That's... Yeah. Uh, read, read them in Arabic and they will tell you when to stop. Carry oh, on. you mean carry with the eye, you mean? Okay. Yeah, we'll carry on. One second. وقدينا بني إلى بني إسرائيل في الكتاب لا تفسدن في الأرض مرتين لا ولا ولا كبيرة. كبيرة. Next. فإذا جاء وعد أولاهما فإذا first point that comes yeah. Mm-hmm. فإذا جاء وعد أولا أولا أولاهما بع بأسنا عليكم أبد أبدا لنا أبدا 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 لنا أولي بأس شديد فجاسوا خالص خلال خلال الديار وكان وعدا مفعولا. Yeah. Next آية. ثم ثم رددنا لكم لكم المكرة كرة عليهم وأمسدناكم بأموال بأموال ونبي وبنين وجعلناكم أكثر نفيرا. Mm-hmm. In Ahsantum, Ahsantum, Leon Fosiko. In As in Ahsantum and Ahsantum Leon Fosikum, what in Asla as what in Asla Satum Falaha, Falahum, Falaha, Faidaja, a Wadul Akirati, La Yus, La Yasu, Yasu, Juhakum, Juhakum, Waliyas, Waliyad Hulul, Masjida. كما دخلوه أول مرة وليتبروا مع على تطويرا. so it says after the first time we will give you money and wealth and we will we will we will prevail and if you do well it's for you and if you do bad it's against you. and then another appointment comes then it will the same happen like the first time they will come and they enter also enter the holy sanctuary. Obviously, with the same result, destroying the holy sanctuary, and they will destroy you and scatter you utterly. So this is the second time which I interpreted as that had happened at the time of Rome. All of that is past; it's gone. 
Now the ayah which the brother was, uh, was asking, the next ayah, what does the next ayah he was asking about? Uh, mm -hmm. Four, one of, one, one of four, ayah 104, bear with me a second, the same, Surah Isra 104, one second. Next one. Uh, next ayah on this section or just complete different what he No, no, about. continue, continue. Oh, okay, okay. In Ahsan, we've done that one. No, no, no. Next ayah. 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 Next so it says, maybe, maybe your Lord will have mercy on you. And if you will go back to transgression and corruption, we will go back to punishment. And the hellfire is an is a, is a imprisonment for the kafirin. Yeah, next ayah. Okay. One second, before we do, because rather than wasting time, um, I don't know. The next, ayah, the next ayah is what the brother is asking about. Okay. We are okay. almost there. I've lost track. Don't, in, don't uh, give up. In, إن هذا القرآن يحدي يحدي للتي هي أقوم ويصب ويبشر. آه خلاص انتهت. So the ayah is as is asked not in this one is something else. So اللي وخذنا وجاءنا بكم لفيفة. Where where is the ayah with لفيفة? يا أبو مهاب. Where are you? One second. One four four. Could be could be one four four. You know what? To be honest with you. I think I'm gonna stop indulging people because at the end of the day, if they want to do it, they can just get on the mic because it makes it much easier. Okay, yeah. so this ayah has been referenced as well, 104. Where is that? In which surah is this one? This one is I'm referring to the same Al-Isra. Isra as well, yes, yes. Where in the Isra? Why we did not pass on this ayah? Where it is? At the very, at the very end, uh, before before the ending. Where, where is it? Read, read it, Abu Muhab. You have the Mus'haf in front of you, Ya Sheikh. Read it. Yes, I've got, I've got it. Do you want me to read, Professor? You got it, Professor. Yeah, read, read, read. Okay, anyone reads? Let's just go ahead. Okay. وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا مُوسَى تِسْعَ آيَاتٍ بَيِّنَاتٍ فَاسْأَلْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ فَقَالَ لَهُ فِرْعَوْنُ إِنِّي لَأَظُنُّكَ يَا مُوسَى مَسْحُورًا where is that? Which ayah is that? Which that right in Isra? Uh, in Isra, uh, ayah number uh, 101. That's at the end of the surah. It's not the beginning of the surah. It has nothing yeah. to do with the two corruptions. Okay. Yeah. okay. Go to 104. Go to 104. So this one. وَقُلْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ لِنَبِي إِسْرَائِيلَ سْكُنُوا الْأَرْضَ فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيفَ Yeah. And then that's it. Yes, well, has nothing to do with the two corruptions, I think. That's, if you read that, read, read Abu Muhab from uh, That's at the conclusion of the surah. Yeah? Okay, here's a question he's asking. Here's a yes. question he's asking. Is it the gathering Lafifa in dunya or akhirah? That's what, that's what I'm saying. Read the ayah so we can okay. conclude correctly. Okay, that's okay, why okay. I'm saying, I'm answering the brother by saying you read an ayah isolated. That's not the way the Quran should be read. Read the Abu Muhab from وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَ مُوسَى تَسْعَ بَيِّنَاتٍ ولقد أتينا موسى تسع آيات بينات فاسأل بني إسرائيل إذ جاءهم فقال له فرعون إني لا أظنك يا موسى مسحورا قال لقد عليك لا تنسى تقول كل شيء ذاكر وجيب موسى ناين ناين ساينس إتسترا and فرعون told him I think you are you are bewitched okay next just quickly قال لقد علمت ما أنزل هؤلاء إلا رب السماوات والأرض بصائرة وإني لا أظنك يا فرعون مثبورة Musa answered Pharaoh, you know that these are revealed from the, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, but I think you are, you are a loser, you are a destroyed one. Next, yeah? He wanted to expel them out of the land, so we made him to drown with his army, all of them. Yeah, next. وقلنا من بعده لبني إسرائيل سكنوا الأرض فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة جئنا بكم لفيفة. Uh, and you told them Israel after that, after Pharaoh was, was destroyed, dwell on earth, which earth is not mentioned. It's not the earth of Egypt, it's another earth. When the, the, the appointment of Akhirah comes, we will get you Lafifa. The Akhirah here means the Yom Al-Qiyamah. That's it. So uh, you, you will settle in earth, in dunya, 
That earth is maybe originally the, uh, 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 the earth of Palestine, later on in Iraq and, and, and uh, Iran and uh, part in Egypt, later on in Russia and so on, <laughs> maybe down the road in, in Kazakhstan. And then Yom Al-Qiyamah, they will be all collected, like all humans. That's it. It has, to, has nothing to do with, with the collection in Palestine, has nothing to do with the corruption. It's just uh, that, that the dwelling in the earth, you are not eternal on earth. There will be an end of the earth and you will be collected Yom Al-Qiyamah. Jina, become the FIFA. We'll get you all of you collected. That's it. So Chef, it is for Akhira. Chef, okay. is that is that answer the brother? This is for Akhira. Has nothing to do with dunya. Okay, let's just leave it at that. We're wasting our time. Just, just, no, just, no, just, we just, just. Wait, wait. Well, before we, before Mukhtar, before you shoot, one question. There's, there's a, some. I'm getting some. Uh, I'm, I'm half. You know, it's difficult to track between different things. I'm just going to get a copy of the Quran and I'm going to swear on Mushaf in a moment for one reason because. I believe in every single word I say, and I stand by my honor. And Sheikh, you are with me. You can be another witness. Do you remember many years ago when there was a when I met you in um, one of the one of the war camp one of the campaigns in Hyde Park Corner, mm -hmm. and Hizbut Tahrir did a sticker campaign said, "Don't stop the war except through Islamic politics." You and I are very old. We've been around a while, and we've seen. Uh, stuff before the days of beautiful YouTube. So I will now swear, this is Quran, I am swearing on Mus'haf. To the best of my recollection, and I swear by Allah, and I invoke Allah's curse on me if I am lying, and I invoke, if you want to rebuttal this, you can feel free to bring Allah's curse on you as well, because I do not lie, because this is deen, and this is something important. I swear by Allah, Hizbut Tahrir had a campaign where they put, don't stop the war and in smaller font except through islamic politics and everyone multiple witnesses no denying in the uk thought many people thought what's this ridiculous campaign because it's like saying i'm gonna use a toilet but use it it's like saying i'm not gonna stab a baby but except i'm gonna stab a baby but you can only not stab a baby if it's through an islamic mean it's a negative action Every, most many people were thinking what kind of a ridiculous campaign and i swear by allah this happened and if you want to get on camera, get Quran, swear and invoke Allah's curse on me and I will invoke it on you. I will, I'm not lying about this. Do not be so partisan to be deluded as to events that actually happened with multiple witnesses. Now, I am supporting Hizmat Tahrir in their campaigns. I am promoting their material where it coincides and I agree. But I will not lie. And they're human beings. They make mistakes. I make mistakes. I've got a potty mouth. Not denying that. However, yeah. be just. It did happen. Out. Uh, anyway, let's let's go to the. So you see, when when you read the ayahs in context, you see the meaning clearly. It is related to what happened with Pharaoh and Musa, what he answered them, and the Pharaoh was drowned, and Bani Israel was told, just dwell on earth, and when Yom Al Akhirah, Yom Al Qiyamah comes, we will collect you. So you, the earth is not eternal. There's a day of resurrection. This also partially refutes that you in the Old Testament you rarely find any reference to Yom Al Qiyamah as if dunya is eternal which is really shocking, but this is because these, uh, this Old Testament and most of the books have been edited, mutilated, referenced, and so on, and most likely they slimmed anything related to uh, certain issues out of the, out of the, uh, old, uh, out of the uh, old revelations, in part. Although there's some, some places there are hints, but it should be much more prevalent than what is uh, now there. And that moved some Western scholars, some so-called secular scholars, to claim that the concept of Akhara developed actually later. Uh, original Judaism and Musa never had any idea about resurrection or Akhara. He went to that extreme because the lack of any clear and detailed reference. If you compare that to the Quran, where every second ayah is referring to Akhara, al al Akhir is obviously shocking. But I think it was it, in the original, it would have been much more. But the current literature in our hand is re edited, recollected slimmed down, cross-referenced wrongly and rightly, etc., and some of it removed, etc. So that's, that reference is about Akhira, not, not dunya. It's, it's not had nothing to do with coming in Palestine or being in Kazakhstan or in America or anywhere. It's the earth here, meaning the earth in which they live. That's the earth, the earth we live on, on, on all it. Sometimes it's part of the earth, sometimes the whole earth is meant. As in the, the word used in Quran for earth, al -arb, sometimes means the whole earth, Sometimes uh, it means only a specific earth, yeah? But as will be clear in tafsir, we have already mentioned some of that in previous halakas, and that more of that will come down the road, inshallah.
Jade, good. Anything uh, uh, otherwise to discuss, or should we just? Uh... Um, before, Asr, obviously, we've got about a few minutes before we need to break for Asr. Uh, Mukhtar wants to say something. Mukhtar, don't say anything too, too stupid, please. Yeah. You, no, no, no. Yeah, you know these ayahs. I can remember Sheikh Baloj using these ayahs for for Islamic eschatology. And uh, yes, I think yes. you probably know where this I, came from. So I, now, I believe, I, think... I know, I know. And Imran Hussein, I, I know both are mistaken. Yes. It has nothing to do with the eschatology. Um, All, almost, almost certainly. I'm not saying certainly, but almost certainly has nothing to do with eschatology. That's all referring yeah, to but, that. but, but when they were doing their talks, I mean, I can't remember. Uh, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Very strong difference. You don't need to, to go to the Balushi because they mentioned some hadith, some broken isnad, some uh, wishy-washy arguments. But the ayahs and the context are clear. I, be, I, I don't think they have to do anything to eschatology. It's all referring to the past. Mm -hmm. But okay. we'll, come, we'll come to that, inshallah, in due course, in various surahs, and we'll discuss that, inshallah, in full detail. When, when, do you, when the time comes for these ayahs, in, uh, most likely is that because they rely heavily on these various books of uh, Hadith, Akhir Zaman, Eschatology, Book of the Fitan of Nu'aym and Muhammad, which is full of fabricated, broken ahadith, questionable uh, narration from tabi'een and sahaba, uh, which uh, uh, has no authority or authenticity, etc., etc. But that's not a, it's not a time to go in that. Besides, it is really a trap to go into, uh, going to eschatology is, is, a, is usually uh, a dangerous, uh, dangerous road to go. It's a very dangerous road to go. Yeah? Yes. Uh, finally, but we'll discuss that, and when we, uh, we soon will be finishing through the Tawbah and going to Yunus, and there's plenty about Bani Israel there. Not that extremely plenty, but we are not far away from that, and Surah Yusuf, and from Isra, and so on. So we are coming soon to that, inshallah. Yes. Finally, Professor, in two sentences, two, two sentences, I, I would just want to say that we, we we need as a Muslim community to stand our grounds, to hold firm to our beliefs, you know, and not be exactly. pushed. Uh, to uh, condemn, for example, the action. No, no, no. That, this, this will, this will be, this, this be not, was not only bet betrayal, to be utter stupidity. Condemn what? Absolutely. Condemn for what? Absolutely. L let me tell you. Let me tell you why. Because, because uh, uh, occupation, as uh, as Brother Muhammad Hijab said, the occupate the occupation cannot be a uh, uh, civilian. They are combatant by by, yeah, by, yeah, absolutely, by, absolutely. by default by the de by definition. So they cannot uh, claim that we are uh, civilians. We we have been attacked and so on. Uh, on the other side, on the other side, look at uh, the Israelis. They are blatantly saying that we will attack civilian animals because they are all supporters of Hamas. So why yeah. the so why the West aren't you know forcing them to condemn their saying because then because they only care about um, attacking the Muslims you know then yeah, about, yeah that's very about, that's very about silencing Muslims and uh, and finally I would say that you know uh, we are calling um, uh, Israelis uh, to be not civilians for the right reasons because they are occup uh, because they are an occupation not because they are Jews. Or they are whatever because they are occupation. Once they leave the country, uh, they would be they would be civilian, and it's um, it is haram for us to right. target anyone. Absolutely. Else. What what uh, as that's the reason I made the introduction. Say this is this is an a colonial implant. That's the land, land don't belong there. Let me just mention just one issue. There was discussion about obviously mosques are in Islam very have high sanctuary. They, are, they they belong to the community. You cannot sell them in contradistinction to Christian church, which owns by the church, the church can't sell it. In Islam, you cannot do that. They are waqf. They cannot be sold. And the scholars in time past, them, all of them, I think, or the majority of them discussed the issue. If a mosque happened to be built on a usurped land, what to do with them? And all of them, or the majority of them, agreed that it has to be demolished. It has no sanctity. It is not in the right place. It has no, it has no protection. Being on a usurped land must be removed. Must be. Unless the only the one who the, from whom the land have dissolved explicitly approved the mosque and agree on it, then it has given it the sanctuary. Before that, it has no sanctity. The same apply for someone standing on a land who is not belong it by by the, using by, by force because he is there. He is not he is trespassing. He is not supposed to be there. He has to be removed. If he goes peacefully, alhamdulillah. If he doesn't go peacefully, he has to be removed with the necessary force. And the force needed is appropriate according to the situation. If it is protected like these settlers, protected by military uh, detachment and so on, then you have to use military means. Clearly, if it's a, 
a single settler alone, then you just go on the company and say, gentlemen, get out and you take him and put him in, in a jeep and get him out. And that's what Hamas exactly did. They took many of them prisoners of war this way. They did not uh, shoot them. And so, although they, someone could make an argument that they should be shot there because they were standing there for a long time, maybe for decades, without justification. But Hamas did not do that. So that's just to clarify even the even such a, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it pity legality, but the legality of this. In, in a land which does not belong to you, which you have usurped, you have no right to be there. And the landowner has the right to remove you. If he is reasonable and gentle, he will remove you with the appropriate, with the appropriate means uh, uh, suitable for the situation. But he has the right to shoot you. Say, get out or I shoot you and put a gun in front of you. You don't move, he shoot you right away. That's his right. But it's better and reasonable to accompany you out if he can do that. But in the situation in Palestine, that's not possible because there's a military detachment and bases protecting that. So it has to be used. It has to use deadly force to get them out. And, and even that, and even that, Hamas used the deadly force quite very modestly and moderately. Yes, and and all of them are military personnel. They they serviced in the. It's, it's irrelevant if they military personnel. That is the secondary point. But they are military personnel. That's an addition. That's 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 the icing on the cake. But their mere presence on a usurped land make them a legitimate target of removal. The removal can be could be reasonably done with the appropriate mean. The appropriate mean has to be judged by the one removing them. If they are protected by military force, like in Palestine, clearly, the whole army is protecting them, then you have to use deadly force to remove them. And they say Hamas removed many of them with a much gentler force than the deadly one. They don't use deadly force unless absolutely necessary, which is, which is a plus in their favor. That they are also military and trade and so on, that's icing with the cake. That's an extra. That's an extra. So that's the issue is not that they are military or not military. The issue is that standing there where they do not belong and they have to be removed. They move peacefully, alhamdulillah. They don't move peacefully. Of course, may be needed to remove them. As, as a general principle, use more reasonable and well-balanced and moderate force. But these guys there are protected by military with deadly force. You may need to use deadly force to remove them. And if you apprehend them, they are also prisoners of war because they're participants in the usurpation of the land and the protection of the usurper. So they are engaged in military activity, directly or indirectly. So they're prisoners of war. They're not hostages. We're not talking about a, a gang of mafia taking hostages and asking for, for money, ransom. No, that's not. That's, that's, that will be hostages. So the use of word hostages is, 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 is an outrage. It should be anyone using that deliberately should be spat in the, his face. Directly, without mercy. Yeah. Before we go, I just said, uh, for some reason, you know, when you debate with people, there's an honesty to it. And when somebody looks for very snidey point scoring, I've seen that a lot. I've seen that a hell of a lot, which is why I, I, I often blow up at people when they don't, they, they look not for genuinely at a point. They just look to discredit someone. I have just sworn on Mushaf to say that I remember this event. I'm sorry to, to bring something so petty, but somebody in the comments is actually just making an issue that because I don't have a physical sticker from that event, it's I'm effectively slandering uh, the, uh, the group. Despite the fact I am related to prominent members of the Hizb who were there, despite yeah. the fact he mentioned a name, he, my niece is married to his, his son. I'm very well connected. And I went to uni with half of them, and I was there with half of them. He's saying, you can't accuse without proof. Despite you are a witness, do you remember, don't stop the war except through Islamic politics, a sticker? I can WhatsApp right now, the people on our own WhatsApp group, Watford, Kashif, Hafiz, they were all there. Don't stop the war. We were all commenting about it. But now somehow, is it... Is am I permitted as a believer to swear that I saw with my own eyes? No, 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 no. I, I, I just, just, just control your your emotions. I think some people are the partisanship and 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 uh, and and uh, and uh, sectarian uh, sectarian inclination sometimes take people's mind and blind them from uh, reasonable and well balanced discourse. And we I'm not doing we something haram by saying what I actually saw. No, no, I no, no. Saw. no. No. And I don't, I, my mum, I've got a lot of Khilafah magazines at my mum's place. 
I've got uh, stuff going back 30 years. I might not have this because I was out there about this time. So I'm not doing anything sinful by testifying and swearing on Mushaf at what he actually saw. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Anyway, that's fine. I'm going to end yeah. this discussion because genuinely I've spoken to people who are disingenuous. They remind me of the Jews. When Abdullah ibn uh, Salam came and took Shahada, sorry, when, when Rasulullah Sallam asked about Abdullah ibn Salam and their Jews said good things about him, when he came out, they said, oh, he's the worst of us. This yeah. kind of discourse reminds me of that. And because I'm a, I believe in what I say, yeah. I get emotional because I think this is beneath anyone's arguments. And if any, I know the, the people Taji and that, they're not like this. They're not disingenuous and petty like that. And there's so many witnesses, it's beyond doubt. It's just, this is actually doing, this is why I have a lot of uh, um, an, uh, antagonistic discussion with some members of, uh, associated with the Hizb, because they are that petty. They're effectively calling other people, denigrating other people, when the actual members don't do that. So, yeah, yeah anyway, I got this, because uh, someone's just, yeah. Anyways, anyways, um, if there's any outstanding questions, inshallah, next week. We can, we yeah, can have a follow-on discussion. So we can catch uh, Asal and yeah. I'll try to digest that. But as I said, we have to really do the, the media aspect and uh, have the argument in a structured and strong way and forceful. And as I said, uh, concerning the campaign of Brave Man, this, this bitch, Brave Man and Co, uh, and her threat, don't bother about the threat. And if there's a lawsuit, then insist on, on plead, pleading non-guilty and uh, getting the matter to the court and ask if it's permissible by law to have it a public uh, court proceeding and uh, and uh, to have a, a, a jury trial. And then we see how things develop in the public domain. Because this, this matter must be one day uh, arbitrated and discussed publicly. Well, that, I believe this definition of so-called glorification of terrorism and so on is not sound uh, in the sense of the legal definition of crimes and so on. And most likely it will be struck down by the courts uh, at least in the Supreme Court, it will not survive. That's not, that's an ill-defined, and uh, it's something that is ill-defined, cannot be used for criminalization. And they will, will see that in the court, inshallah, bismillah. Okay, so that's just an advice to everyone. Don't chicken out, let them, they, let them chicken out. They will chicken out. The moment they see the people are ready to go to court and uh, uh, stand public trials, etc., they will they will step back. Like I said, I myself and George Yellow, we remember we have challenged them in a television interview. Uh, we say that the Palestinians are, are freedom fighters and not uh, terrorists and so on. And then we are waiting for the invitation to the court. Nothing has come until this very moment. And we're still waiting. We're waiting tomorrow also. Okay? Allah barakatillah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa tayyibin wa tahirin wa sahabatin wa rasulin mujahidin wa sadiqin. Assalamu alaykum wa barakatillah. Jazakum alaykum wa barakatillah.